Hey, Anthony here, Tornado Tag Podcast. Um, going to do something new, a little new here, a little intro. Going to give you a quick rundown of what to expect this episode, and uh, then we'll get you right into the intro music and onto the show. So uh, we're back. We're going to be we're going to be back to a weekly prog- uh, podcast again. We're going to be over the phone. So um, definitely be mindful of some technical difficulties, or it may not have the best quality that you're used to because we are relying on uh, at the moment Facebook Messenger. We're going to try that out at first and see how it goes. But uh, you may have some interference here and there. Um, we're going to talk about how the uh, COVID-19 has affected us, our daily lives, and how it has affected the indie scene and, and wrestling in general. We'll talk about the empty arena shows from SmackDown to Raw and AEW. A lot of big debuts. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to mo- mostly cover everything that's been going on and the lead up to this weekend's WrestleMania. Um, a little bit of Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, we talk about the Chris Benoit and New Jack. So a lot of really cool, fun stuff to check out this episode. We are back. We hope you guys enjoy it. Let your people you know. Share us. Let us know. Let people know that we're in the area and uh, and, and we're back to podcasting. Uh, we really look forward to getting back to it soon and uh, going back to PPW and Outbreak and all these other amazing indie shows. But until then, support your local wrestling co- companies. Um, check out. You know, I know money's tight. I know we have a merch page, uh, but definitely go check out some local guys and buy some T-shirts and and help them out as well if if you're if you have the means to do so. Um, big business is is going to be fine, but these smaller businesses and and independent guys are definitely going to need your help. So definitely check that out and. Uh, Here's some no rain checks, and well, actually, real quick before we get into that, um, go over to prowrestlingscorecards.com. Uh, you can find them on all social media: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Pro Wrestling Scorecards. Get your WrestleMania cards now. Get ready. Get them filled out. They are taking a thousand people for their next for the uh, the next update here uh, for the beta. So they're letting a thousand more people to play uh, beta online. You can you can compete against the Tornado Tag crew on uh, the online. Pro Pickums, and we'll give you a little insight here. Who, what, what do we think? And maybe give you some insight of what maybe you can pick. So head over to Pro Wrestling Scorecards, get your own, get your card, and uh, let's have some fun this WrestleMania. Uh, join us. We'll probably be doing some stuff on uh, on the Facebook page. So uh, we'll have some fun this mania and have uh, get our minds off what's going on in the world and enjoy some pro wrestling this weekend. So here's some no rain checks, and on to our show. going on everybody tornado tag podcast we are back um it's really weird it's a different energy for me anyway i, I just we'll, we'll see how it goes i'm excited though we are going to try our first ever podcast where i'm sitting at the table alone um I, but i am not alone everyone's on the phone we're gonna try we're gonna try the power of the internet and have our show here vir- all virtual i guess you're gonna say we we, we did stop the show People for a while. power yeah the power of the internet and power of technology but we were gonna stop the show for a while but i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest i thought this was gonna be a, a week or two thing and then uh it's not it's definitely gonna be a lot longer than expected and I feel we should still do shows somehow, and I, I I miss talking to everybody. So we're gonna we're gonna pick up the ball, keep rolling here, and, and keep it going. So uh, on the phone we got Tyler. Hey, what's up, guys? Andy. Hello. I was just say hello, hello. Like hello, 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 hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, Brian. Hi, I'm Brian. Hi, he is Brian, and our special guest. We we, we this is like a new uh, uh look a. Uh, joining of the forces here I, i'm digging it um we, we we have uh we have we have uh the the blue and gold back together tonight ladies and gentlemen 
Hello? Yeah, you guys are the only ones that are booking us for the next few months. <laughs> <laughs> You're, we're giving work. We're giving guys work. Um, Matt Turner is TTP exclusive. You heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. listen, <laughs> Colton the Power Ring is not a thing anymore. But maybe, maybe with this this whole quarantine thing, and and we we're kind of figuring out this phone call situation. He, he maybe we'll just keep you as a as a member of the roster here and just have you do it this way. There you go. That would be yeah. a great name. Call it in the quarantine. Cor- oh call it in, calling it in the quarantine. That's what we're going to el- name this episode. It in the yeah. <laughs> right, well, well, thank, thanks for having me, guys. I've been going on a, a, little, a little nuts here, you know, so work at the moment and whatnot. Yeah, I I am not essential, so I am have not been working, and it's been insane. I I think today is the first day I had a, a t-shirt, underwear, and pants on all day long. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. I'm fully dressed. Uh, I figured I should get up. I I think I've showered twice since this quarantine. I just feel like I don't need it. <laughs> no, I'm, just... <laughs> I'm like I'm like I, I, work I feel like the than... CDC would not be happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. I am worried about I am I am worried about headers. I don't know if the dad and me I text him every day. I'm like, you still work? He's like, yeah. I'm like, are you washing yeah. your hands? Are you being careful? <laughs> yeah, I, I've been going in for overtime to get paid more because uh, I'm in stores every day. So yeah, it's the work side of it is uh, actually more for me. Everything yeah. else is, is stopped, but work is way more. <laughs> so it's crazy, man. Like you hear more and more people coming down with it, and the cases are going up, and it's just like it, it's it's something I've never. Well, I mean, anyone, not just me. Uh, this is something we've never experienced as a society ever before. Like, like, like the world has like been many shut years, down. Like 19, so like nineteen eighteen. Yeah, yeah, that was like the last big yeah, yeah world it's a Spanish flu, right? Yeah, it's just really yeah. interesting how how things are gonna like if because if we're down for another let's say month or two um Ugh. like how do you how do you restart the economy after this you know what i mean like it's yeah, just it's, small business man yeah i feel bad for any small businesses right now it's it's strange it's just really strange and uh, like i don't know man we'll see how it goes down but it's it's definitely uh it's really it's really interesting how everything is going down and how how it's gonna bounce back i'm very interested to see how it goes but Man, like the death numbers are are going to be really high, and that's not good at all. Um, Scary, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but we'll we'll get away from that darkness. We'll try to. I tell you, don't focus on that. Focus on the people that uh, you know, yeah got Let's... through it. The people like oh, what's his name? Just Howard Stern. Yeah. Um, I forget his name. He's a he calls himself the Kyle. Guy, not inside. Kyle something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he he had it and he got over it. So right, yeah. and he was telling Howard all about it. So it's not it's not like you get it and you just immediately die. I was listening. I was listening to some stuff too, and then I, I obviously I listen to a lot of Rogan. But they were saying like most of the population, not most, but a, a good chunk of people can have it, but not even show symptoms. And then, yeah, about and there's like non-symptomatic it. people, and then there's people who get mm-hmm. it, and it's just like it just no, not a big deal. Then there's people who get it, and it's all ages. It's not just the old people, the boomer disease here, but it's it's there's young people getting it. There's every age group is getting it. And when they get it, it's like the worst thing they've ever experienced. It's like yeah, it's... like professional athletes are getting it and acting like and they say it was like the worst thing they have ever had. But then there's people like yeah. like celebrities who had and like, yeah, it really I have no symptoms. I'm fine. I have a little bit of a sore throat. That's it. But uh the scariest thing like is I'm sitting in my room playing Xbox and I have like a cough or a sneeze. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God, it's it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah, trust I, me. I've been with my anxiety, man, every time I have a sore throat or anything happens, I'm like, well, there's Rona. Yeah. Yeah, I did that with my daughter. She was doing some schoolwork and she started coughing. I was like, put it in a plastic bag and put you on the porch. Well, I was like, 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 I what did you say? Oh, okay, that's weird. I'm not moving. Like I said, my mom, she would always get bronchitis really bad. And like, I was over the same house. I would not get it from her ever. So I would just get like a little bit of a sore throat or anything. So, you know, everything, any sickness affects people differently. Yeah, I'm one of the guys, if I get the flu, I have it for like two days or a day. And I'm and then I'm dead, but then I'm fine. I'm just, that's yeah. not usually high. But we'll see how it goes. I don't plan on trying to get this, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, with uh, with I don't know anybody that is planning on it. So good, yeah. <laughs> Just help these people out there licking everything. Um, so with, yeah, with everything, fucking toilet season shit. <laughs> so with us being down for a while, 
Um, we have. I, I don't even remember the last thing we even talked about. I don't remember the last time we even even had a get together or what was the last thing. But we'll try to do our best to recap everything. Um, I do know, you know, a lot of wrestling shows, local stuff has been down. Uh, we PPW shows yes. are on on hold. Outbreak has been on hold. Um, and then High Tension just actually deleted their event, so we're not sure when that's all going to happen. Um, the concert that we're all oh, we're going to go to to go see Fozzy is 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 on postponed, but they have a rescheduled date. I think it's going to be in August, so hopefully that'll be fine. Yeah. August or June or so. Jericho June, did say that. So hopefully that's still a go, um, because I really really want to see Fozzy. Um, yeah, yeah, me too, man. They're, they're great live. I did. My brother got me tickets in that VIP experience for my birthday a couple years ago. It, it was it was worth it. I'm mean, well, I didn't pay for anything, but if I did, it was worth every penny. It was fantastic. Well, there there might be a little bit. I'll kind of leak it a little bit here. I was actually just on the phone with Jay Hunter um, from iRock Radio, and they're going to change up the format a little bit. Um, so I think what he's he's doing here, he's he, he may fe- feature the podcast, not just wrestling. I don't know if we're just going to do interviews. I'm not sure exactly which one we're going to put on, or maybe just rotate it. But we're going to fe- he's going to play an episode on the radio station at least maybe once once a once a month or something but like we'll have like a time slot at a certain time where the podcast will play in exchange to that i will become a dj on his on his station so i will go and record i guess some vignettes talk about some tracks and then have like a like a 35 40 minute or 30 40 30 30 to 45 minute set list where i will have like a block to start off um and promote the podcast and pick a couple songs, but his birthday show That's is actually cool. going to be the headlining the headlining band for the iRock Radio birthday show is going to be Fozzy. So that'll be something we we actually be kind of in, a part of as a podcast. You know what I mean? Because we'll be kind of joining forces with the radio show, and it helps us get a little bit of exposure and get our name out there more. So I'm I'm definitely excited for it. That's awesome. That would be awesome. Guys. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So. Uh, I, I know this is, we're a little further in, but if you do, I do know everything going on. We, the merch store is there. Not going to push it, but just let you guys know it is still there. We have no sales or anything going on. Uh, we're going to wait till all this blows over. Um, uh, what else we got? Definitely hit like and subscribe, and uh, let's let's definitely get into it here. Um, so- I, 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 hang on. I, I don't know. Maybe there should be a sale because you could buy a shirt, cut it up. Make your own face mask. <laughs> yeah. Have the tornado tag face mask. It'll be great. <laughs> oh, hey, while we're plugging merch, head over to ProWrestlingTees.com. See blue and gold. Blue and gold. There you go. Yeah. You were you sound a little further away from your mic there, but definitely yeah, ProWrestlingTees.com, and you can check out the uh, the um, the merch for um, uh, blue and gold. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't <laughs> say it there. I was. It's just... uh, Team Blue and Gold. If you look it up on Pro Wrestling Tees, it's under Team Blue and Gold. Team Blue and Gold. Oh. Yeah. I'll tell you what, did you see AEW's new shirt line? Like the couple new shirts they put out? For Matt Hardy and Lance Archer and everywhere? Jericho has a new shirt. Um, so There's a whole... There's, he's four, three. Yeah, there's a handful of different shirts, but Jesus Christ, if Jericho... Adam if you, has a good one. If you could take a break on the t-shirts, because uh, I, I, I I have a Jericho shirt collection, and Jesus Christmas, Jericho, slow down. I don't got the money right now. I thought there would be a release to Hound shirt yesterday, but there wasn't. I don't yeah. know why they haven't gotten on that. I'm sure it has gotten over, but I, I, I or, uh, uh, elite delete shirt, elite the delete. Yes. Or something. Yeah, Jericho can get anything over. It's just insane his his magic ability. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> he's the best in the world right now at doing that. Man, he can get anything over. I'll tell you, like I know I I I have my top five of of like my favorite wrestlers and. Obviously, Shawn Michaels is on a very high pedestal for my number one, but I honestly feel by the end of his career, it, it might go Jericho then Shawn. I think Jericho might be. That's exactly that's exactly how it goes with me. Except it's Brett and then Jericho, and I think Jericho will take over by the time it's all said and done. Yeah, wrestling news related, but a weird wrestling news related. Since this quarantine, my wife has been binge watching since season one, um, Total Divas. I'm not going to say I've watched oh, every God. single episode. <laughs> Um, but this is her way of watching wrestling. She likes it. Um, so I'm not going to knock I will it. say this. I will say this. John Cena comes off as the coolest guy in the universe on that show. Yeah. And, and the same, thing with Miz, same thing with Miz and Mrs. That's why they turned the Miz baby face because he's like the coolest guy. Same with, same with Yeah, Uso. he's like the biggest baby face on there. Naomi's husband look comes off cool as hell in it. Like their relationship seems fantastic. Um, you know who I... Well, that's because they don't that, they, they don't record Uso drinking and driving. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the camera should be. That's quality TV. Yeah, right. Um, you know who I... There is one, <laughs> that's for the live PD crossover. Yeah. You know who I don't like in the show? And I... And I know it's all scripted, and it's probably not really that person. But man, this 
they just make Natalia come off as a scumbag in that show. Yeah, they make her her, her marriage look really, really bad. They make you her marriage how, look bad. How... She she literally yeah, yeah. will sit there and say like, "Oh my god, I love you," and then as soon as this person's gone, whoever's not there, Natalia is talking about, and she just like every she, every five seconds she's running to talent to tell on people. Like she's the worst in this show. Like I, you know, if, if I she was, gets, she gets less annoying as the seasons go on. She I would like be, I'd be fighting her if I was out. somebody. If I was, if I yeah, was she a female, has, she has, she has a character arc. That's basically what it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, so, wasn't Rhonda like annoying on her episode or her season? I don't think we're was that far yet. Likeable? Rhonda she wasn't was, so bad. I didn't hate her, but she was a little annoying here and there. Did you ever see her on the Ultimate Fighter where she when she coached against uh, Misha Tate? Yeah, that shit was hilarious. Yeah, that was good. You can tell she was she was not, not or she wasn't supposed to. She was supposed to coach against Kat Pagano, who she generally likes, yeah. and she generally really hates Misha Tate. I so when Misha they, Tate when took a lot Kat, of pop shots at her, so when it came and and, and yeah. Rhonda's at the point where like this is not reality TV. Like I have to fight you. Like I will kill you. And then Misha Tate just kept running her mouth. Misha Tate refused to give Ronda a title shot when she was on her upswing and did everything in her power yeah, to force. not make it happen. And then when they finally fought, Ronda's like, I'm going to hurt you like because you did this to me. Like You could have stunted my, my, up my, my career here. So she just never had that. So she's like, I'm not going to be fake. When you extend your hand, I don't want to shake it. Like, don't ever touch me. <laughs> like, that, like, she just does not like that. Like, she was, and it kind of gave Ronda a bad rap because for the most part, every single opponent she's ever had, she's been respectful to, except really Misha. And, oh, oh and what's Misha. her name? The, yeah, and Misha. Beth Cohea. Yeah. Be, yeah, but well, that's because Beth Cohea made some suicide yeah, jokes uh, about Remarks her. about her dad, yeah. Yeah. And, and, mm. yeah. But, yeah. She so, got knocked out for it. She did, yeah. And then they, the memes came where everyone superimposed her. She pooped herself. That didn't really happen. Yeah, that shit was fun. Yeah, that was the weekend after uh, P- Piper passed away because she even she even hyped up the fight on Piper's podcast like four months out. Yeah. And then Piper passed away. I think it was that Thursday or Friday, and the fight was Saturday. Yeah. It, it's been it's been crazy. It was it was crazy. I I actually look I kind of look forward to her coming back. But one of the cool things they did say in Total Divas that. Um, was said on the show and they they said you know ronda rousey is ronda rousey but they said that um shana baszler has been ronda rousey before ronda rousey so hopefully they kind of keep that in the back of their mind and use her as a monster like i that's a, honestly for me that's a dream match one of the dream matches that i've been talking about since the first female royal rumble or maybe first or second is when they squared off um Rhea and charlotte in the ring for a few seconds i'm like this is i hope this happens sooner than later because I don't think I can wait four years for that for Rhea to move up and for this all to happen. And they found a way to squeeze it in now. So I'm, that's that's one of the matches I'm really excited for this weekend. Well, let's. I mean, let's just segue right into it. What do you guys? I mean, I know it's a different feel. Um, I, I think the the Mania card overall looks actually really good. I'm actually I actually finally started getting excited for probably yesterday morning. Yeah. So, but I'm really again again it's gonna be a different feel not in front of seventy five thousand people and having the cool set. But it's cool that it's on two days. You know, they're kind of taking akin to uh, what uh, Wrestle Kingdom did. Is, is it really two days? Are, year. are they just saying instead of calling it NXT Takeover on Saturday, they're just going to call it part WrestleMania Part One? No, it's, yeah, it's, it's all doing. WrestleMania. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's two, two days, days, but they're yeah. just taking the t- NXT spot. Yeah. yeah. Now here's the thing. Now I wonder, were they going to do this two days regardless of where they were at? No, I don't, think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Social this was just a thing. quarantine thing. Okay. Yeah, they can't. Yeah. They can only have so many people on the building at one time. Because instead of just calling it NXT Takeover and then WrestleMania the next day, they're just going to merge the two cards together and then go from there. That's what it seems like. Well, they're doing well, the, most, they're doing the Takeover card on Wednesday. Yeah, oh, most really? of the matches they were going to do for sorry, uh, most of the matches they were going to do for NXT Takeover are going to be on the weekly NXTs. Like the Keith Lee, Dijak, Damian Priest match was supposed to be a takeover match, but they did it this week. Yeah, yeah, it was this week's main event, which is actually really—it was a really good match. Well, it wasn't be, great. Be, I had a little, had a little higher expectations, but it wasn't bad. Yeah. Before we jump fully, fully into Mania, since since this house all went down, have you guys been tuning in religiously every week to Raw and SmackDown? No. Yeah, I've watched them. I've watched them, but then, they have not that's been it. good. Yeah. Well, I liked the first one, and the second one was 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 not so good, but the third one was pretty good. The first one was the best, though. I, I, oh gonna, yeah, for AEW, AEW has been good. Yeah, a, AEW. I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely honest. Like w- since we've taken this break and we haven't been sitting down and talking, to me, like 
it, it did affect my wrestling and viewing ability because I it's it was kind of like a little like not depression but like it's not the same. It's like when you do something with your buddies and then your buddies don't want to do it no more. Like it's like it kind of loses that l- l- luster. So I, I'm gonna be honest. Like wrestling has not been high in my priority. Um, but I think now that we're talking about it, I'm I'm kind of getting those ju- juices back. I'm getting excited. But I turned on I turned on the first Raw and I was like okay. And then I got we got the promo, and then I watched two recorded uh, previous matches from like John Cena and Bray Wyatt and then another old match and I was like if this is the whole show I'm not doing this and I turned it off and then they're like yeah. oh well later on they had one other match and then three other promos and I was like that's not enough to keep me aboard like sorry I'm yeah, not I'm not watching a highlight show or I'm not watching especially for three hours yeah, <laughs> that's a three hour match. like a three hour thing I can just turn on the network and do it like I just it so it I have not been excited to watch Smart Raw SmackDown because it starts off with a pretty decent promo, and then I have to sit through two hours, almost an hour and 45 minutes of old matches to get another match that's new and a small build-up for Mania. So I just, I, 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 I don't have, and same thing with NXT. I haven't been watching any of them. Well, I, I've been telling uh, any, any head of this for about the better part of eight months. Have you been SmackDown? I mean, it's been okay. It's been pretty good. But the Daniel Bryan stuff alone, I mean, you could always just DVR it and just go get to his stuff. Yeah. But the Daniel Bryan stuff alone is whether it's the Bray Wyatt stuff or the stuff he's doing now with Drew Gulak and, and then he's feuding against Sami Zayn, Nakamura, and Cesaro. I mean, those are all five of those guys really, really great, great, great in ring work. Yeah, that stuff's been great. I've been loving the Drew Gulak, Daniel Bryan stuff. It's been and, awesome. And from, yeah. from what I've been reading, too, like that Daniel Bryan, Drew Gulak is like, he's kind of backstage, like, I don't have work. Like I really don't have anything. They don't have anything planned for me. <clears throat> but I see these guys backstage who are super, super talented. Drew Grulak being one of them. If I'm going to be getting any type of work because I, I do have that name, so I'm going to get. They're going to find something for me regardless, even though if it's not high powered. Um, I I'm going to bring this guy along because he's good. So he was kind of like pitching ideas to get other people on TV, just like the power of Daniel Bryan, but he's using it in the right way. He used to do that stuff in Ring of Honor all the time, where it's like, okay, we're gonna bring you in, we don't know what we're gonna do with you, and then he would like either tell Gabe or Hunter or whoever was booking, like, all right, if you don't have anything to do with me the next show, I want a mini fuse with this guy, or let me have a couple title defenses to get delirious. Like he would all, he's very unselfish with that. He's, he's such a with, good human, like, man. Yeah. There's, Speaking I, of Ring of Honor and Daniel Bryan, they actually put up on their YouTube channel today. Kenny Omega versus Seth Rollins versus Daniel Bryan in Ring of Honor oh, in like wow. 2000, like nine. Really? Entire, well, they're, they're redoing the Honor Club for years. They wouldn't do anything. Uh, they wouldn't put anything on the Honor Club app that wasn't anything pre Sinclair, which they took over in 2000, uh, 2011, 2012, and they just started putting 2010 stuff on there. And now all the pay per views and all the special shows are all going to be included with your Honor Club uh, merch, with your Honor Club um, subscription, like how WWE Network does. Nice. So I think that was very, very smart on their end. And they kept putting uh, right before their anniversary show, which they had to cancel. They were putting three match every day for I think like 14 days. They were putting three matches up of like CM Punk, and the next day would be three matches of Samoa Joe, and the three matches of Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens, the three matches of of. Uh, uh, Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan. So they're giving away a lot of really good content over there. Yeah, that that may be something once they now that honor package rolls out and it's nine eighty nine, I and we get working or I get somehow get unemployment or some type of income coming in for me soon because it's not looking good. I, I've applied like over a week or two weeks ago and haven't had any contact. Um, but I, I that is something I would definitely like to go back and see some of that old ROH stuff because it seems like every single superstar that I'm a fan of all came from that those stomping grounds. And I know we talked a lot about Jericho and uh, being. Someone's creaking around over there. Um, <laughs> I know Jericho. There, everyone talked about Jericho and his not only just how he's been as a wrestler over the past, you know, his whole career, but his impact he had on wrestling. And I think another guy who can definitely creep into people's great, greatest of all time list. I know he's creeping in mine. Is Daniel Bryan? Like that. Guy, like everything you hear about him, just not only his in-ring work, but his comeback, and then his, his everything he's been doing, but his being unselfish and reinventing himself as as well. He's 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 fantastic. He's so good. I always okay. and I always tell people that, that have not seen his Ring of Honor stuff. Tell me what his best WWE matches in your mind, and I will give you at least a dozen matches that were better than that that he's had in Ring of Honor. Yeah, 
just just in the yeah, recent, he, uh, just in recent memory, like, was it? him his match with Brock was fantastic, and I wasn't even excited sure. for it. Yeah, and the, the, the Fiend yeah. was good too. Yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah, only thing, the only thing that Sinclair has to do, they have the money. If they're going to show this old Daniel Bryan stuff, they need to buy the rights to the final countdown. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah. Oh, wait, that was that his entrance music. It yes, was amazing. Yeah. And then when they hit that big part, the whole crowd would scream, it's the final countdown. Oh, that's awesome. It was so much fun. <laughs> crowd participation in music is always great. I can't wait for that to come back. It'd be nice for a crowd to come back, period. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, well, that's kind of just skimming over um, kind of what's been going on Raw, SmackDown, NXT. And I'm sure we'll we'll kind of throw it in there as we're coming into our Mania talk. We'll, every every match, we'll kind of talk about the build-up to it a little bit. But uh, we have all kind of agreeing the only thing we've really been watching, for most of us, is, is has been AEW. And man, have they been doing a fantastic job with what they have. Yeah, I kind of... Yeah. I kind of felt bad for them because their first empty arena show was the one where they have all these big payoffs. Like, it would have been yeah. a huge thing in front of a crowd. Yeah. Especially, like, Vanguard 1 coming out and then Matt Hardy and Brody Lee. Like, the crowd went insane. Yeah. But here's, here's something you got to look at. Say this quarantine thing goes until July. Are you going to hold out those angles until July? No. Exactly. No, I wouldn't have. No, I, I totally understand way. that, yeah. Yep. Because they were kind of probably banking the same thing maybe we were doing at first, too. Like, let's just take a week or two off because that's what we're saying. We're going to get a two-week layoff because, realistically, our, our corporate greed and our president, and I did not expect it going over two weeks. I just didn't. I just thought they would have been like, eh, no. F it. Everyone get back to work, and what happens, happens. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Um and it didn't, obviously. Uh, so I think AEW is kind of maybe thinking the same thing too. Like they're going to do this two week layoff, and then we'll have people back in here, and then we'll be ready to go for blood and what was it blood and gory or blood and guts or whatever. Blood and guts. Yeah. yeah. So and obviously that didn't happen either. Um, which is that that pay per view is now completely off for now, right? Well, that was going to be a special, but they want to do that in front of a large crowd, and they also. Like how with WrestleMania, they canceled the Battle Royals because of the social distancing things. You don't want to match with a lot of people in it, like a 10-person tag or a Battle Royal or something like that. Yeah. Who do you think so far? I mean, we'll get into each like certain episodes, but who do you think right now in AEW this quarantine has done phenomenal things for with camera time? Uh, that's probably a good question. I, probably, <laughs> I would say probably Cody Rose. He's been like really the leader on their television. And he's his commentary, commentary. Been excellent. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's been doing great commentary. He's always having matches. He's wrestled, I think, on two of the three, two of the three of the episodes so far. Yeah. So he's been pretty active. Yeah, Sammy Guevara as well has really taken advantage of it. With yeah. the whole making out with the Brandy Rhodes uh, uh, <laughs> drawing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sammy Guevara. Uh, we'll, we'll, I have something I want to bring about him later, but. Um, my my pick, I think he's been reinventing himself, just not even in the ring. And then when he finally got in ring, it actually worked for him. I think Sean Spears is getting a little revitalization. Well, he's getting more of a push, which helps. Yeah, yeah. just he's willing he's to be TV. he's willing to be there, and he's getting on TV. And I think I think people are excited for him a little bit again. I think that little banter he has, where they're like they're gambling with each other. I just think it's I it was that's funny. what I I like. I, that adds mm-hmm. something to his character right now. He's like betting on everything. He's like a gambler. Like yeah, him that. and AJ, him and yeah, AJ, him and uh, MJF were kind of be- betting on the one show, and then they're betting in ring. Like I, I just think him getting on betting TV in the match. Good. Yeah, that was that was funny. Yeah. Um, the first show in the, in the stadium. I mean, Jesus! If that was a real thing where people were actually there, that would have looked awesome. That was a that would have been an mm-hmm. awesome venue. Like, could you imagine Hardy in the bleachers coming out and all the like the crowd around him when he was standing there? Like, could you um, just? Yeah, oh, it would have been huge. Well, that was where exploded. a fight for the fallen was. Yeah, um, and then he was doing like the elite delete. Like the crowd would have ate that stuff up. Like it, uh, it just it's a it's disappointing, but at the same time, they're I think they're doing a, a great job and. I know you were saying, Tyler, in our group chat, um, that the uh, the Hardy gimmick isn't doing it for you. But man, I I strongly disagree. I think I think he found a new way to kind of get it going up again and, and ready to like. I I'm digging it. I'm excited for it. And I think him and Jericho is the perfect way to start it. I think Jericho might be the only saving grace for me because like I loved Jericho this past week. I loved his angle with Vanguard in his pool and shit. Like that made me laugh. 
just for a debut though, I, I think it was more that there was no crowd. I just it felt like such like a down for me. I was just like, Ugh. like it just didn't do. I think if there was a huge crowd and a huge reaction, maybe I would have felt differently. Mm-hmm. But with it just being Matt coming out and then teleporting and stuff, I was just like, Ugh. it just it wasn't for me. Like it just didn't do it for me. Yeah, like he has he has the abilities. He can teleport. He can control the the it's pyro magic. on the stage. He has a supernatural <laughs> ability, which no one really in AEW has. Like there is spooky guys, but no one really has like abilities. You know what I mean? So I think that's kind of cool that he's that guy right now. Yeah, I'll like say the, the Undertaker. Uh, right, right, yeah, exactly. Like he can teleport. Yeah, so can the Undertaker. The Undertaker can shoot lightning bolts. It happens. Yeah, it's wrestling. I like uh, it. Dude, but like, I eat one, that shit up. <laughs> I'm a gimmick guy. I the love one, it. <laughs> the one that really hasn't done it for me, and I'm sure it'll get better once he gets in the ring because of how great he is, is the Mr. Brody Lee thing. It just feels like sour grapes. Love me, Vince. It's just a little off. Yeah, it's just it's just shot after Vince, shot after Vince. It's just like, oh man, dude. It just feels very like a guy who still washes his hair with his ex-girlfriend shampoo because he's not over it. It's like, dude, right, exactly. Like, yeah. hey, grow up, man. Like, it's over. That's, that's, I, th- I don't mind it too much. I just I thought his gear looked terribly indie. <laughs> like, yeah. especially when he first came out with the purple and black pants. I'm like, mm-hmm. it, it was bad. His... But uh, I, I like Brody, but uh, I don't... The, the problem was the bottom of that much. Yeah. His... his, uh, his... His talk in Jericho was excellent too. Uh, pl- quick, give a plug to that podcast. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah, that was a really good podcast. So I, it's interesting it's a, to see where he's going to go. Sidebar: Today he had a good one too, where him and Marty Elias, the referee, talk about uh, Shawn Michael and Undertaker's match at WrestleMania 25. Ooh. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll definitely have to tune that one in. Um, yeah, so um, one of the big things happening with AEW now is they 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 they've announced their their TV title. Um, yeah, the TNT title. I hate that. That's the worst ever. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hate that too. I, I hate the name. Hate Why the is name. no one talking about that on the internet? Like, here's the thing. I think AEW is getting. The, I don't want uh, it. Getting a free pass on a lot of shit. Because if, if if WWE made the USA Network title, the internet would explode sure, making fun sure. of them. For sure. Yeah. How do they do the US title? Yeah. <laughs> the US. They, they made the United States title, the US, the USA team title. I'd yeah. Like, and now we okay. have the Fox Championship. Like the internet would collectively <laughs> yeah. shit their pants what, laughing, no, making fun. But what of about WWE. this? It's what it's if, been your time to shine, damn it. <laughs> well, you know how ESPN is, is showing WWE. So what if they show more and they had an ESPN title? Would you be okay with that? I mean, if they did at this point... Uh, it would still annoy the shit out of me. <laughs> if they did at this point, I, I don't want to hear any wrestling fans complain about it. They didn't say one word about the TNT title. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind it because I'm hoping it looks like it has, like, dynamite on it. And, uh, like, right, yeah, TNT, dynamite, <laughs> yeah. yeah, get it. So, I, I don't know. Yeah, they, Even if, if they just have the name television, if even if it was called the TNT Television Championship, I'd be like, eh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but just being the TNT Championship, I'm like, oh, God. So going into that, it was like, man, who are they going to put that belt on? Who's going to be their secondary guy? Maybe this is a way to get like people like Sonny Kiss on TV, maybe Sean Spears. Um, but, man, they put some heavy names in this bracket. Well, that's yeah, what they... you did back in the old school. Your secondary title was a stepping stone to the world title. It wasn't. Yeah. Get some guy you're not doing anything with, so just throw a belt on him. Who, who right your... away before even anybody was announced, yeah. Cody was the first name that popped in my head would yeah. be the champion. I I think Lance Archer's gonna get it now. Okay, I'm like I like how we're all going different directions here. Brian, who's your pick? Yeah, who, I who think, do you think's I winning think it... it? Cody makes a lot of sense to me because he can't win the world title, and maybe they do a thing where like this is as big as the world title now. I, I'm only having this title because I can't be the world champion, and that's his bridge to contending for the world title. Yeah. Matt? It's going to be, I can agree with my tag partner. I think it's going to be Lance Archer over Cody in the finals because that's what they're building towards. And then Cody's going to chase Archer. And then, so this way he's going to have, he's going to be like Dreamer. He's going to have more than one person to feud with that he can do for 18 to 24 months. So he can feud with MJF. He can feud with Wardlow. He can feud with Lance Archer. That makes a lot of sense. If Jake brings in, yeah. So I I think it's a little too soon to beat Archer. Like he's just coming in. I would have him lose for a while. Yeah. yeah, my pick. Is, well, that's why I wish, Archer, right. I wish Archer wasn't even in the tournament. I wish that I would rather Archer cost Cody the tournament than make the entire tournament about their feud. Yeah, because I don't think Archer needs a belt because he's already. I mean, the guy's so darn Exa- tall. That's he's exactly like, how I feel, Matt. I feel like he's so big, he's such a monster, and he's the only, one of the few monsters they have in the company that he doesn't need a, t- a title already. That's and he's, and, he's, and he's got Jake talking for him, but at the same time, I I prefer them not beating him. And that over him having a title. So yeah. if he's going to be in the tournament, I, I think he should win it. I have a dark horse pick. I don't think I don't know if he'll go far, but this is who I want to win. But I think I think it's going to be Cody as well. But my dark horse, Sammy Guevara. 
<laughs> Somehow, I just want Guevara to have that belt. I just think he'd be hilarious with a title. He's the guy that can lose every week on TV, and it never hurts him. Yeah, he's. You know, dude, I'm he's, so he's... impressed with that kid. When he first made his press conference and he came out as cocky as hell, like I'm the greatest in the world. Like, who are you? Like, oh, he's great. He's yeah. great. And then yeah. in retrospect, like, man, he, you, he, they gave him the spotlight and just let him, gave him the ball and let him run. And the kid's been killing it. Like, he's so entertaining. <laughs> and, and just officially, yeah, he's been great. And just officially, blue and gold will love me over. It's totally gonna be Lance Lance Archer. Yeah, oh, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm pumped. Uh, I just think I, I, I'm pumped for that title. I'm excited to see how it goes. Um, They've needed a mid card title for a while. So it's yes. Yeah, I agree. I think it's too soon. Too soon? Really? I, I think it's too soon. Yeah, they've only been um, a main. They haven't been on TV. They've only been on TV since October second. So, I mean. I, I think it's too soon for the top, for a mid card title. Yeah, I think they are progressing very well though for their first full fiscal year. Yeah, I agree. I think they're doing a really good job. Um, I'm definitely not like playing favoritism anymore because I don't I don't want to get sucked into my old wrestling ways and just get sucked. But I mean, AEW has definitely been super impressive, and I'm having a good time with it. Um, I think I think the only guy in the roster who I'm who I'm maybe not as high on as I was like, I gave him tons of credit for his matches. I think he impressed me, but like, just, I think seeing him every week is just starting to bother me. He, he, I'm, maybe I'm getting the, the, the old school John, how people thought about John Cena for a while, but just that's Cody for me. Yeah. Well, you've been on the hate and Cody train for a little bit <laughs> now. It's been no, like I, I, a I, month but or when so. he's in there, when he's in there, his matches are entertaining. I just don't like his story, the story between the matches when he's, when he has to get in the ring and work, he's fantastic. But the stories that lead into the ring, I'm just not. They just like it's like, oh, really? Like he has like, to get like the promos and the build up to his matches. Not so much. That's the, 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 some of the best things. AW's not so much done. the promos, but like, like where he like where he always has to be the guy getting the shit kicked out of him. Or it's me against the world. But he has everyone in his corner. But like that whole like martyr thing he's putting out, it's just so annoying to me. And I, and I was with you until they did this blood and guts build. Now he does have people in his corner, so it makes sense now. Yeah. So I, I, I'm okay with it. The one person in AW that I can just say they do nothing for me, and they don't push him really, so it's okay, is Jimmy Havoc. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was never on a uh, fan of his. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, maybe if he's having the death matches and he's doing all the crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah, he's, like, uh, he's like a smaller that, Jeff Hardy to me. I don't know. Nothing appealing there for me. Yeah. <laughs> what See, the, the smaller Jeff Hardy for me is Darby, and Darby's great. Yeah, D Darby yeah. is yeah. definitely the next Jeff Hardy light. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't think they even the, need him there. Going back on the Cody thing, what do you think about him, him, have him and Arn Anderson in as like a coach? Because you never really had – like he's got like the – like the playbook, like the laminated sheet, like the, like the NFL <laughs> Waffle House menu. Yeah. yeah. And, and he covers his mouth like the NFL coach is doing. I like the little touches, but it's the same thing with MJF. We're just, okay, when's Arn going to turn? Yeah. Because Arn can't be a good guy forever. It's Arn. And, and Cody has I, to have yeah, the trail. He has to have his best friend turn his back on it. Like it just... well, he already had MJF turn on him. I mean, yeah. How many turns can they do, you know? But, but, Tony, what you're talking about is every 1980s baby face, and that's what uh, Cody's trying to yeah, be. Yeah, I know. It just it's Hogan. It's me, Dusty. It's, it's what they sick. were. Yeah, it's bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Just, like, everything has to, like, it's like one kid that, I don't know, like, it's when you have that one indie, like, any star, and you're just like, everything's going to go against you, but you're going to rise above it. Just, like, that old school, like, Rocky movie every every week on wrestling. It's just, I'm just so sick of it already. <laughs> that's the business, daddy. Yeah, yeah that's, that's John Cena right there. I'll tell you what, man. Rise above hate. The now with today's times going on, man, it's that dust that that dusty promo just rings true right now, man. We're, we're going times, through some hard baby. times, baby. <laughs> uh -huh. um, A virus just took your job, daddy. <laughs> um, I, this is kind of completely off track. I don't know why it just popped in my head. Uh, I think because we were just talking about uh, Dusty and. Uh, Pro Wrestling Crate's next crate. They already announced one of the T-shirts is going to be a Dusty shirt, which I'm really excited yeah, about. Yeah, I seen that. Um, I know I got my crate. Brian got his. I didn't make a video of my crate yet. I'll probably do it and then upload it after this. Um, but you didn't. You didn't like your crate at all. I was. I was hoping for a mask. I think. I think yeah. I was disappointed that there was no mask. No mask definitely well, bothered me. Um, but I was think it a overall, lucha themed one. Yes. This yeah. Is a lucha thing mask. So I thought having a mask would have been fantastic. Unfortunately, we didn't get a mask, which was really, really disappointing. 
the shirts were cool. Um, the, the one shirt was, uh, it's kind of like the red circle from Jurassic Park, but inside of it, it's Luchasaurus, mm-hmm. and then it says Luchasaurus in Jurassic Park font. Yeah, I like that one. I like the Luchasaur- Luchasaurus. I can't speak today. Luchasaurus. Yeah. Sure. The other one was a stained glass window of uh, like sugar skulls of uh, the uh, Lucha Bros. So that's two Lucha Bros shirts now. Um, oh, that's them. pretty cool. That one was pretty. It, I it, would like one like that with uh, Thunder Rosa. <laughs> yeah, I would have. I would have definitely went a different direction with the Lucha Bros because they already did one shirt. Like since since owning this box, I've gotten two Young Buck shirts. Now two with Luchasaurus on it with with his his stable and now him which I don't mind, and then now two Luchas uh, I mean um, two Lucha shirts Bros. with Lucha Bros on it so I I kind of like a little more variety with the shirt thing but I I get it why they I, maybe they can't um so that it's also that, pro wrestling and tees so they're gonna push the AEW guys yeah and I listen yeah. I don't mind like I I I don't have to go out and buy AEW shirts now because I'm pretty much getting them in my Lucha in my crate which is kind of cool um do yeah, I'm trying to think. the micro brawler was a uh, a, uh, El Generico, El Generico, which looks fantastic. He has this big dumb smile and his finger in the air. I love that. Yeah, I would have I would have loved his mask. That would have been the, a huge thing for me. Oh, that would have been a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. The DVD was the fact um, that WWE never can- capitalized on that and had Sami Zayn go away and come back to El Generico to fuck with Kevin Owens was a huge mess. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah, they didn't I don't, have the I don't get that at all. No, Sami is a character yeah. I'd imagine. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Know. Yeah, when they were doing like, everything with him and Kevin Owens, that was the perfect time to do it, and they they, they messed yeah, up. Yeah, it was. Well, they yeah. did it in Ring of Honor. I don't know if you guys remember that. Yeah. If they would have recreated that at WWE, that would have been fantastic. But I think Vince would have been like, yeah, this. I, I wish Vince is probably like that stupid. It won't go over, but it's one of those things that would have won over tremendously. It's so funny. The the night they did the loser leaves town match where Generico beat Kevin Steen, I was in New York that night, but I was not at that show. I was doing something else. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, it was like a three year. It was a it was a three year build because they what a one year at final. Yeah, two year, three year build because one year final battle is when they lost, they lost to the Bucks. It's kind of hard to hear you there, Matt. And, oh, can you hear me better? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, the one yeah, it was like a three year build they did. Cause I remember uh, Steve wrote it all out. He turned on Generico at final battle and they lost to the Bucks, and then a year later the next year's final battle they did the loser leaves town match and then um and then uh the next year owens was the champion and he defended against uh generico in the ladder match so yeah they they, they connected themselves within three uh three final battles which is their wrestlemania which you never you never see wwe do yeah yeah the night of either that second or third i was at a weezer concert at the roseland ballroom but it was the same night that they were doing that yeah I, yeah, that was hopefully shot. I get to see Weezer this year. I, I'm really excited for that. Hopefully it still happens. Um, other item, the autograph. I have no it's idea who the guy it. was. Oh, uh, Dr. Wagner Jr. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea who that guy is. Um, <laughs> big uh, in Mexico. Big in Mexico. Very big in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Legend and Lucha Libre. The DVD, I don't remember. Who was the DVD? Ty, Ty of Valkyrie. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Ty of Valkyrie. Um, there was another item that I didn't know who it was. There was a uh, Los Guerreros beer koozie. Yeah, yeah, that I did like. But wasn't there another uh, another guy in the box that had an item that I wasn't one hundred percent sure who it was? I believe that was it. I think that was everything. Okay, I thought there was one other. Guy. I thought there was one other. Oh, oh yeah, pin. there was a. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, a Perostel Mall pin. Who? Perostel Mall, the uh, the promotion Paraguay Junior. Oh jeez, I don't. Yeah, I have no idea. It's a cool looking pin though. It was I, I a. Like it. it was a. It was a thing where Peril Jr., like this is obviously a long time ago, Peril is unfortunately no longer with us, but him and a bunch of other people broke off of AAA and started their own promotion, Peril Stone Mall, and then they, after a while, just became a heel stable in AAA, or a Rudo stable in AAA, and it was a pin for that promotion. Hmm. Oh, wow. I never heard of it. That kind of cool. I kind of like that pin now a little more. There's a little bit of something there. Um, and then the last item was the beer koozie for the Los Guerreros beer, which is the Chavo and Eddie beer made by a brewery in – I forget where they say it's out of. But the only problem with that is is they send you the koozie, which is the koozie's awesome, and it's like a, lo- a Mexican lager, which I do like Mexican lagers. I think they're it's, if they're done right, some of them are really good beers, and if it's done by a craft brewery, nine times out of ten, it's going to be fucking awesome. Um, so you, they give you the card to go online that you could order the beer and it will ship right to you. And I was like, that's Ooh. fucking awesome. I kind of want an Eddie Guerrero. Like if I can get a bottle of that and kind of have the bottle and it's like an Eddie Guerrero beer, like I would keep that bottle. I think that'd be fantastic. Go on their website. It's not even in production. 
So why would you send me a koozie of a beer that's not even like I was so disappointed. Like I was like, if it's like 12, yeah, 13 bucks stupid. a bottle, it's expensive. But you have it shipped to me. I will buy one big bottle of it and just kind of do it for our beer podcast and have an Eddie Guerrero beer. That'd be awesome. And it's not even in production. You can't even order it. I was like, this is bullshit. Wow. Why would you even maybe, like, maybe maybe it's from a few years ago. Maybe it was. And yeah, then yeah. A bit. So disappointed. I, I wanted that beer and it, that was the only thing I didn't like about it. But I thought the koozie was awesome. And just to know that's an Eddie Guerrero beer out there is is uh is pretty fantastic um yeah so aew is there anything else you guys want to really talk about with aew no i, I think cover most of it uh just a really quick aside i think they've done a good job showcasing some variety in the women's division i know a lot of us were fans of the enhancement talent yesterday or wednesday, yeah, well, wednesday. what was her name something J. J with two y she was uh she was anna, anna, anna J. Yeah. yeah she's i guess she's a qt marshall trainee she's and Q- glacier, she's a qtr and I'll glacier yeah yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I guess it's where they were filming for a while. They were filming at uh, QT Marshall's gym. Yeah, apparently they taped enough for like a, they said maybe next week or two weeks. So uh, from what uh, I read, they're good. From what I read, they're good through mid May. Wow. And there, there was a story that broke where mm-hmm. apparently people said there was a cop that came in and tried to shut them down because they were filming up until like midnight that night. Georgia was going to be under a stay at home order and they couldn't film anymore. And people were like, yeah, the police are trying to shut them down, but it was a code enforcement officer, and he was just there to kind of make sure everything was okay. But, yeah, they, they're they apparently good through mid-May. Wow. How about that? It, here's the thing, too, with, with AEW, like knowing that it's taped and you go in and watch it, they do a very good job making it seamless that it doesn't seem like it's a taped show, which I think helps. Yeah, they do. Because uh, they, they re-recorded uh, Jericho's segment with Matt Hardy the other week. The first week, so that wasn't actually live. Yeah, it, I think that's where you really are benefiting from having experienced announcers like Shivani and Jim Ross. They they know how to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that uh, where WWE splices everything together, it just doesn't seem good, and it 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 bothers me. Yeah, hopefully they do a better job with that with WrestleMania because that's going to be a little weird if they don't. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I would think they have enough time because they record WrestleMania what, last week. Yeah, like the middle yeah. of last week. Yeah, so I mean, there's I'm plenty shocked. of time to get the production. I'm absolutely shocked that there's been no leaks or spoilers at all. Yeah, me too. I haven't seen well, anything. Yeah, I know. Honestly, I'm very shocked. I've, and, well, Vince, Vince told Vince told people at Nas if anybody if it gets leaked, whoever whoever he thinks it is is fired. Like there's no you're you're done. There's no zero tolerance. Listen, so I'm not complaining. Why. I hate spoilers and leaks like that, so I'm happy that yep. it didn't mm-hmm. happen. What if what if the leaks was like uh they're still there? Uh, the revival, Luke Harper, <laughs> everyone that's unhappy leaks it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're just sitting there tweeting away. Supposedly, Jeff, I know, kind of get, but Jeff um, thought he was going to come back and his contract would be over, and I guess Vince slapped him with that. Well, you've been out for a while, so we were going to tack on a year. Yeah, when he was hurt. So, mm-hmm. that, well, Jeff already has a, I, I don't think it's quite a year, but I think it's something like five months, six months, or something like that. But obviously, when he's done, he's going to go with Matt. I mean, come on. <laughs> Supposedly, he's, he, he wants to push the Willow thing on TV. Because he yeah, said, which, when I, when I come back, it's going to no be completely that. different. Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would think, Je- like they always say, Vince, when he sees you one way, that's how he sees you forever, and he yeah. sees him as nineteen ninety eight Jeff Hardy. So, yeah, I, yes. I don't see that happening there. Um, I do have one other topic I want to talk about, but I don't know if I want to bring it up now or wait till we after after we talk about Mania. I know Tyler, you are watching uh, right now. We are recording on Friday night. Um, so normally this is like a bang and beers thing, but that's completely off the table as well now too. Um, <clears throat> the um. Anything going on in SmackDown worth talking about right now? Uh, Tamina beat Bailey and Lacey oh. Evans in a triple threat. I mean, not Bailey. Uh, Naomi, Lacey Evans, and Tamina. Tamina won. Wow. And now they're just showing a replay of Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels from WrestleMania <laughs> 24. <laughs> well, why not? 24, yeah. Yes. Hey, if yeah. anyone has enough tape library to play to <laughs> fill up a year's worth of shows, it's WWE. I mean, my God, the parallel they have. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that. That that moment has been that moment's been turned into a meme now with this whole thing. It's like when Grandpa starts coughing, yeah. and it's like I'm sorry, I need to kick him in the head. That's um, pretty good. 
Yeah, I, I, in our group chat, I actually put some pictures up of of old school Tamina. Tamina, and I I never seen her before. I just recently, like I said, I bounced back into wrestling. She looked a lot like she was jacked, and she looked a lot like a like a like a younger yeah, I, uh, Marce- Mercedes I Martinez. I don't remember her like that ever. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think she ever looked were... that good in WWE. Like in that picture where she looked all jacked, that was like indie Tamina. Yeah, even like a one alpha she where debuted, she had like that. She was really... a ma- she was a manager of the Usos. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, she I was really. That. She was. She was a very. She was much. She looked a lot different. I'll, we'll put it that way. Obviously, people get older. I don't want to make fun of her or shit on her. But yeah, she. Uh, she looked like a young Mar- Mercedes Martinez, um, without the tattoos. Uh, uh, trying to think of what else here. So yeah, the other topic I want to kind of bring up. Um, a big thing happened wrestling wise on another network, Vice Network. Um, the two part. Oh yeah, Benoit Dark Side series. of the Ring. Yeah. I didn't watch it, so I don't know if you guys did. I know the new Jack one came out now, and that's that's the talk of the town. So I, I didn't. Watch, I've never actually watched any of them. I, you I've definitely two, should. I, know they go I mean, the I, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, seen, seen, I've seen two of them now. I've seen the Macho Man Elizabeth one, and now I've seen the Benoit one. And I kind of want to go. I know I did see a little bit of the the, bro, the Bruiser Brody one. I didn't see the whole thing, but I the Brody one I thought was excellent. Yeah, I thought I've the Brody seen, one I've, was excellent. I've seen all of them. I, I, I'm oh man, that that Benoit one, man, that was fucking hard. That was like. I I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna make myself sound like a fucking tough guy. There was one part of that documentary where I legit cried. I'm not even gonna bullshit like that. That was a that was a very difficult watch. Yeah, yeah it was. Great it was one. very emotional, especially toward the end with. I, well, again, I don't want to spoil it either, but with like a kind of a reconnection. Yeah. Very very. Once emotional. again, Jericho they- shows that he is the fucking one of the greatest human beings in the pro wrestling world. Ever and you then know. he never and then he never rated the new Jack new Jack. He, he narrates the whole season. He said it was. Oh, does he? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, he narrates the whole thing. Yeah. They, well, it's they, a Canadian company that does them. That makes makes sense. Yeah. They actually do a good job. It's called Dark Side of the Ring. Of like at the end, giving it a happy ending, like the Benoit one, like had it. Even the Von Erichs one, like they show. I'm a huge fan of the Von Erichs. Mm-hmm. And they, I mean, and everyone knows their story, but they do a good job of like. Kevin that piece and his place in Hawaii and his two sons mm-hmm. are, you know, they're wrestlers and he's got grandkids and like they show him actually happy. They do like a good, a good job of like putting like a nice cherry on top of everything. So yeah. cool. And another really good one. Another really good one was last season. The Gino Hernandez one was really good too. That was great. Yeah, that was the great. Montreal Screwdrop episode was great too. I love that one. I didn't watch yeah, it. Scott I, Hall, we've Hall. seen it so many times. I didn't think there would be anything else in there that would get me excited is there, is there is there any other thing in there that they talked that you'd never heard about yeah, before yeah, yeah it's a lot yeah. of vince russo and jim Cornette sniping each other <laughs> really i thought i thought like, something to wrestle with podcast with Bruce pritchard i thought that was a great episode of the montreal screw job yeah, yeah that was a, a great episode there's a really good uh a couple minute segment there with scott hall telling you that he thinks it's a work he, he, he breaks it down how he goes look at this look at this this is why it's a work and you break and then you're like I wonder if he's right, and then course, and they show Cornette, and he's, he tries to debunk their theory. Yeah, and they're just like, oh man, like I you always hear people thinking, oh, it's a work, it's a work, like ah, it's not. But then Scott Hall breaks it down why why it's a work, and I'm like, when you, you, when you watch him talking about it, you really second guess it. Yeah. Yeah, I have to. Maybe I'll see that part because I didn't. I never seen his breakdown of why it's a work. So that that'll turn. That'll interest me of why to maybe watch it. I did hear some back. I heard stuff from other people saying that Brett and Sean are actually really good friends. Even to the like, even, like the whole time they were very like they would talk. The whole like the only time they ever sat down was in front of Jim, Jim Ross, and I heard that's complete bullshit. They've had half conversations after, because I mean each one of those guys made out like a fucking bandit when it came to money after that whole situation. I think they hate each other now, and they always did. Yeah. <laughs> that seems to be the word. They they never really liked each other. Yeah, and I mean, and if people say it's a work, but like man, that they worked out for Bret Hart. They, I mean, yeah, he, got a, he, got he a, made money. He got a big paycheck yeah, from he got WCW. Nine million dollars. Yeah. I mean, he made money, yeah. but man, that WCW was horrible. And then Col- Goldberg, uh, sorry about that. Well, Goldberg that's because WCW Ted was a bunch of morons. They get the hottest free in all the world, and then bring him in to be a special referee. Yeah, <laughs> the old lackey, like. Uh, that's how I would have booked him. No, just... <laughs> that was another thing. Uh, that was another thing I watched during the layoff was the Stone Cold. Uh, what are they calling now? This uh, I don't know what it is. But Broken Skull Sessions. Yeah, yeah, with yeah with Bret Hart. That was a lot of fun. I mean, a lot of the screw job stuff. If you've read Bret's book, which I recommend a lot, a lot of it's in there. 
But then at the very end, it's just Brett and Steve Austin just breaking down their two matches, the one at the end of 96 and the one, or the one at the end of 95, or yeah, 96, and the one at the very very beginning of 97 at WrestleMania 13. Do they talk and that was very interesting. Uh, a little bit, but it felt like they clipped a lot out. I think Brett may have said something, and this is just me guessing from the way they clipped it out. It, I feel like Brett may have said something quasi-negative about Owen's widow, and WWE was just like, no, let's chop it out. Yeah. But they did talk about Owen a little bit, and then they um, they Cold's, covered a lot of. I'm sorry, Stone Cold's really candid about he he. It's one of those friend. It's one of those things that he has on the back of his head that he wished he would have not been such an asshole about and went up and talked to him and kind of buried that hatchet because he he was not on good terms with Owen when he died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'd be interested. And then I think the. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. no, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say the conversation. Absolutely. And the next Broken Skull is going to be Austin and Flair. Oh, wow. Oh, that should be pretty good. Stone Cold's killing it, man. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Him and Jericho have amazing podcasts. Jericho's had a string of really good ones, like Brody yeah. Lee and uh, I forget, Nilo. That one was really good. And that one today with Marty Elias was really good. Like, he's, he's having a lot of really good podcasts lately. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with this, with this Benoit documentary, does any, does anyone have a different view or take on any of it? Does like at all? No, I didn't change my mind on anything. I feel the same way that I did, but, uh, yeah. it was, it was a very good watch. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, you, you can appreciate his wrestling, but at the end of the day, he still killed his wife and kid. I mean, you can never let that go. Like when people are like, Oh, put him in the hall of fame. You can't, how do you promote that? You know? Yeah. Okay. Next we're going to put this guy in, uh, this we're still not going to talk about how he died. And yeah. Ignore so like, the fact that he's a murderer. Yeah. yeah. I, like, I wouldn't say race his career. Don't do that. But you can't put him in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> the one thing I'm glad they did because, and, and understandably, this is not a huge part of it all. It's so minor compared to what happened. But I'm glad that they did shine a little bit of light on how good of a, just a wrestling personality that uh, Nancy was. Yeah. Well, oh, yes. I, a lot of people. I loved Woman her. in the 90s. A lot Woman of people great. are pushing for her to be in the Hall of Fame now. No, no, like that would be okay with. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, my, I did have this view going into it a little bit, but I think maybe it enhanced my view a little bit. Um, listen, I'm not condoning a murder suicide at all. What happened is completely, completely tragic. But also, I, I, I strongly, strongly feel that there was a lot at play there, and I think a lot of people let him down as, as mm-hmm. family, and, as friends, as a business. As 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 a, a company, I think the I think the, I think WWE really dropped the ball when it came to helping him as a as a human, and not just as a performer. Everyone around him knew that that grieving process with Eddie was as bad as what it was. People knew he was picking up bottles. People knew he was probably doing other stuff. And then on top of that, he has this un, like just just I'm not saying I'm a fucking brain expert or a, a, a psychology expert, but. Grief in already for somebody can be a huge, huge, huge turning point trigger in people's lives who have no brain problems or no mental instabilities or no drug addictions. Um, that can all add on to it. But now you add on CTE. Now, some of the things I did read with CTE, and I actually had my grandfather, I think, may have had a, a, a brief stint of CTE and dementia towards his end where he would wake up in the middle of the night and start trying to fist fight people or cho- try to choke his girlfriend or wife he was with at the time from what I've heard. And I've heard people who had brain injuries that became super, super violent, and they don't even recall doing it. Um, now my grandfather absolutely did. Yeah. Um now you add uh, he's a, well at the time he was like 30 how, 30 or 40 and his brain was damaged to the point where he was 30 years above his age and now he's drinking he's boozing he's 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 mentally inst- insecure like I, there was just so much at play there that don't, don't forget about the steroids guys Roy Rage is yeah, like yeah the steroids thing. all I mean but he's been on steroids his entire life you know what I mean like it's not a it's not a but secret does, it does its damage though yeah I'm, I'm sure it's not going to help either yeah I don't think you build up a tolerance to steroids when it comes to like the mental side of it the only thing yeah, with the warrior yeah. yeah the only thing I think I I, I, I don't think a Hall of Fame. I don't. I, I I can agree with that. No Hall of Fame, but to erase his legacy and to not talk about it to me isn't a, isn't isn't doing it because he did something horrible and we're erasing it. I see it's one of those things where I like 
if if I knew one of you guys were going through some stuff and I just completely turned a blind eye and let you go through it and then you end up doing something horrible, that's me covering my guilt by saying I would never talk about you again. And I, I, to me, that's how it comes off to me personally. And I think it's something that WWE should say, this is why we have instituted a insane wellness policy. This is why we have instituted no hair. Like he, ch like that day has changed professional wrestling. It has. And, 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 and to say that it's not a tribute to that moment is, is, is a joke, not a joke, but it's not like it's, it's, it's for them to say like, we don't even know who that name is anymore, but we've changed everything yeah. because of it. I, th I think they should be like, listen, he is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. The things he has done, everyone knows him as a human being. Like, that 48-hour window of his 30 years of his life, like, to take someone's 30 years of existence and break it down to a 24-hour window and say everything he's ever done, now he's a fucking monster. Like, his friends and family can't still, to this day, fathom that that even happened. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's insane to me. So, I, I think it should be something like, this is why we have taken Prescott. Like, I'm not saying glorify him. I'm not saying, but, like, still say, like, this is absolutely awful of what happened but this is why we've changed the sport and the business to this point because of what this event was and i think wb not doing that and then another documentary coming out and doing it to me just made wb look like a really shitty company to work for <laughs> just that's how i see it well i'm sure it is yeah. but I, I think what benoit did is so heinous that i'm okay with him disappearing yeah i, I well, let me let, his... let me ask you guys two questions yeah question number one can you guys, or can you guys, or have you guys watched any of Chris Benoit's matches in the past X amount of years? Yes, I have. Yeah, I watch Benoit's matches pretty regularly. I think the only one I've rewatched, I think it was because I rewatched the whole show, was him and Angle at that Royal Rumble. I think yeah. like 2003. Oh, yeah, I forget what year it was. Yeah, I think it was 01. Yeah, yeah 2003, they had a good, good title match for the WWE title at Rumble. Whatever year it was, yeah. Yeah. Now, question number two: How do you guys feel about uh, David Benoit getting the wrestling business and using the name David Benoit? I don't mind it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind. I mean, that's the guy's name. I mean, and then like that. I know I listen to podcasts about uh, the Dark Side of the Night and see it, but like to, to him, like he's like, this was my hero growing up. It was like, yes, the last three days of his life. It was like, imagine me, like growing up with him. That was like who he looked up to. So yeah, you know, I, I don't mind him wrestling being David Benoit. I think yeah, it would, I think I it would be different if it was if Benoit wasn't his real name. I think if if yeah. if, if their real name was like something else, then he was I'm David Benoit. But be like but, yeah, Chris Benoit Jr. And I'd be like, well, maybe don't do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with what everybody just said. I think that it's fine, especially since it really is his last name. Um, I don't maybe if that's maybe, your real name. maybe yeah. they shouldn't play up to the fact you know like the, I don't I don't see anybody mentioning oh here comes Chris Benoit's son like I don't think that's gonna happen so. In yeah. fact, I think if anything, it's going to work against him if he tries to make a run of it. So yeah. if he wants to be David Benoit, then go first, ahead. First thing, he needs to hit the damn gym because he looks like Marco Stunt at the moment. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying he needs to get on the I, juice like his old man, but he needs to at least do something. I, 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 I disagree because I even point, I was watching it with my wife, and I even pointed out some of my wife that part towards the end of the documentary where he started crying, and, his, uh, and Chavo came up to him, and he hugged his aunt, he turned around, and when he hugged, his arm came over, and I'm like, man, I'm like, I looked at my wife. I said, he's got some big arms. Really? You can tell he's been hitting the gym. So I totally disagree with you there. Oh, so I, I didn't really, I wasn't studying it like that, but it, maybe he has been. I mean, he's like a steel or oil construction worker, so he does have a pretty physical, demanding job. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I. I... <sighs> Like I said, it is very hard to talk about a murder suicide and say that it, what what's done has been done. But like, on, I just in my in my the way I'm trying to rationalize it, and maybe the way I'm just seeing it is just like those that 48 hour window has just been it was a huge culmination of a breaking point that no one really like. His obviously his wife and his his wife was probably trying to help him, but they they probably had a really rocky relationship or. They did talk about there was some maybe domestic violence there towards the end where he probably was mm -hmm. losing his shit, but it just it's just super sad that it happened and it's just one of those things where people out people look at an outside view of somebody and be like, well, that's not my business. I'm not getting involved. But if you do get involved, you can prevent some stuff like one of those yeah. not my business type things. And I just I hate that. I hate that mentality. Like in Spider Man when he doesn't stop the robber and the robber goes and kills Uncle Ben. Exactly. Hundred percent. Yeah. 
but it, uh, translate that to Chris Benoit. <laughs> um, yeah, in yeah, real, real so, life. Yeah, but it's it's I don't know, man. I it's just it's just so fucking sad, and it like the way it broke apart a family and 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 stuff like that. It just it, it it's it's one of those things where people are like, oh, wrestling's bullshit and wrestling is fake and wrestling's this, but like these documentaries they do are absolutely fantastic. And we that's what I'm trying to recreate a little bit on our show when we do topics, like just bring certain things to light. Maybe not gruesome or violent, but like some insane stories where people accomplish some amazing things, or even like someone their story of how they got into the business. Like I just think they're fantastic stories that go beyond the ring that I think people should know about. Yeah. So, the sidebar, did anyone see the new Jack? I, I did not. Yeah. No. I'm probably going to watch that. Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, I've seen it. I'm going into the new Jack one without watching it yet, and I don't like new Jack, so I don't know how... I, I, no, maybe... he's... I'm sorry, you're, you're breaking up a little bit, Andy, your, your connection. Oh, I <laughs> New Jack is a piece of shit because uh, he tried to kill a guy during a match and he stabbed several guys in matches. So, mm -hmm. like, he's not a good guy. Yeah. People are like, oh, well, I'm still a fan. He's like, I'm still a fan of a guy who tried to kill someone during a match. <laughs> he just always seemed like yeah. an asshole to me. I just never was a fan of him. They definitely get into all that, too. Just the different incidents uh, mass transit, the Vic mm -hmm. Ron, the one where he just stabbed the guy in Florida. It's yeah, a not a good guy. Yeah, not a good guy. Yeah, so I, I, I'm glad they're not going to try to sway me on that one. <laughs> um, I don't right. think they're going to make that uh, New Jack uh, how good he is. You know? yeah. I mean, they do, they, do, they do try to do the tragic backstory thing, and they do kind of go over, oh, he was really good at this. But it's like, oh, yeah, but he also tried to kill people in the ring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he bragged about the he tried to kill people in the ring. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah, I tried. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I wanted to smash his fucking head off the turnbuckle. Like, you scumbag. Yeah. Vic Rimes, he uh, died, and they said that maybe that maybe died right after that, but like that was one of the contributing factors to him dying later on. Yeah. All right. Um, did he die? Vic yeah, I didn't know Vic Rimes died. Yeah, I, think he did. Did he? I know oh, Mass Transit died. Really. Uh, Matt, oh, yeah, Mass Transit did die, yes. Maybe I'm confused, sorry. I thought he did. Mass Transit, he didn't die in the ring or anything. He died no. from like uh, no. Yeah, New Jack killed him in the ring. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had uh, he had gastric bypass, and there were complications, and he. Uh, yes. Yeah, Vic Grimes is still alive. Oh, wow. How about that? All right. So let's get into our last little bit here. Um, WrestleMania. That's happening tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, my WrestleMania. Is, I'm going to actually, I'm going to try to put this up tonight into tomorrow morning uh, and kind of surprise everybody. Um, it's not a super long episode. I figure like it's about an hour in now. We can do an, like 45, 30 minutes of WrestleMania here and then go from there. Um, and then, and then we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to pick this up and keep doing this every Thursday night. We'll, we'll try to bring it back if you guys are cool with that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm cool with it. And we won't have to do video anymore. So that'll, that'll be, uh, helpful for me because the video rendering. Yeah. A little, little light on the computer. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christmas. Um, Take all right. <laughs> so Brian, you have the card of what, what has been announced a little bit of the card, right? Uh, yeah, well, it's everything that's kind of been built up and announced and led up to. So we're going to start off with, uh, I'm going kind of lowest to highest here from the latest Observer. And match 16 is Elias versus King Corbin. Um, there's more Are we going to go circle now. and like everybody everybody put their prediction with who's going to win? We could do that. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to guess Corbin wins that one just because I think they have higher hopes for him and... It's a throwaway match, so why not have Corbin win? I I think Elias I wins. I yeah, think I, I think Elias wins, and I think Elias wins due to interference. Um, I think Corbin's Ooh. next. I think ri Corbin's next rivalry is going to be Rob Gronkowski. Ugh. See, that's oh exactly what I think. Too. I think okay. Elias will win because Rob is the host of WrestleMania, and he'll pull some strings and distract Baron and cause a scene and mojo will help and then Elias will beat him by shenanigans. Yeah. I could see that. I'm gonna still pay Corbin. I think I think you're right, but I think it might be after match shenanigans. Maybe. Okay. I think they're gonna try yeah. to put, I think they're gonna try to finally put Elias over as a giant baby face again. I think they're gonna try to roll that dice. Um because even on his social media presence, like 
I, I don't know why I got into it, but I made it a TikTok for our podcast network, and I, I just because I guess we I did a few wrestling ones. I made a, I put a video of Andy coming out and did like hashtag wrestling, and TikTok sees all your hashtags and stuff you like, and it kind of puts it all in your your feed that you see. So every one of my f- stories is either a girl in a bikini doing a stupid arm movement dance, which I don't understand to this day, <laughs> or um, or I get professional wrestlers, and Elias is really big on there, like his like his TikTok really? and a lot of social media where he's just like being funny and trying to be like that guy so i'm thinking maybe they're gonna do like they're gonna try mm-hmm. to make up a baby face see i don't have any faith that w is gonna push a lies and make him what he could have been because he could have been something really big uh, like a couple years like a year ago he could have been like off the races yeah he was so over with the crowd and like he was great especially as a heel he was awesome yeah they're flopping but i around still think a lot. he's gonna win the match because i think the the bigger fish to fry is corbin and rob at SummerSlam. To quote the guy with Elias, to quote the guy who runs SmackDown right now, sometimes that damn bell's gonna ring. Yeah, that's that's a problem with Elias. I mean, he looks great, but that man, see, that bell rings. I don't think he's horrible in the yeah, ring. I, I to me, he reminds he, he just he's an older school dude. Like he's not gonna be flashy, and and he just he's gonna be he's gonna give you an old school style match. Like if he was in the seventy in the in the eighties, he would have been fantastic. <laughs> I think then he would have been like hockey tonk man, like, like possibly a bigger hockey tonk man, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, uh, I, I, for some reason, Andy, you're getting really digital sounding. I don't know what's going really? on. Really, it's like a robot. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you guys all together. Yeah. There's- yeah, the that's map. this is gonna be one of the challenges. Maybe next, maybe on Thursday we'll try a different platform. I know that everyone's talking about that Zoom, but I don't need video and. I, I, it's only going to limit me to 40 minutes. I don't really want to do that either. So we'll try to maybe think of something else for next week that we can right. try besides Facebook Messenger. This is a little trial. I, I have something I'll, I have worked, something I'll fine. send over to you. Yeah. Um, all right, so next match, Brian. Alistair Black versus Bobby Lashley. Wow. Um, I mean, Alistair Black has to win, right? Alistair, easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, has, that has to be a squash. Not a squash, maybe, but I think... You've got to make nice Alistair look big. Board. But Alistair has to win convincingly. Yeah. I would love Alistair back. Man, did yeah. it, nobody come out of that feud with Bobby Lashley with so much. No one's bad at Oh, boy. All right, we have, yeah, Andy, you are you might have to back uh, out and join back in. Yeah. Okay, let me try that. Yeah, Andy might have to call back, yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree with the robot Andy had, a, had a Alistair Black in the win. <laughs> I agree with robot Andy. Um, I'll tell you what, I went back and watched a little bit of the highlights of Raw, and when Alistair Black hit – um. AJ with that, that that kick. Holy shit, that looked awesome. You there? Did we lose everybody? Yeah, I, oh. I, I'm here. <laughs> we're, here. we're here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everything everybody said. I, I think that I think it's got to be Alistair and it's got to be pretty straightforward. Yeah. And then the next match we have is Otis versus Dolph Ziggler. I mean, Otis. See, this match, which is very surprising, has been very hard for me to predict because I can see two different ways this match is going to go. I can see them having Otis have the big fan favorite win because he's been screwed over by Dolph for so long. But I can also see them having Dolph win and have Tucker turn on Otis because he feels like Otis is too wrapped up in Mandy and not taking the team seriously enough. And that would be a feud in stone. So I'm kind of stuck. I'm not sure which way I'm leaning, but I'm leaning towards Otis, but I wouldn't be shocked if Ziggler wins. Do you think maybe they can possibly split up Rose and Sonya Deville, where Sonya Deville is kind of like your scumbag for going to Ziggler over Otis? And... That definitely can happen, too, because someone sent a text on Mandy's, you know, on the behalf of Mandy ignoring Otis or whatever, all that bullshit. It so Ziggler. it's either going to be revealed to be Sonya, that's... that's what was Ziggler today? Are you supposed to say that? I don't know, but I, that's what I kind of insinuated. That was probably Ziggler. I love how you guys are trying to make it either be ruled to be Sonya or it's going to be ruled to be yeah. Tucker. But it's a dude. That's this. Either is, way, this, works, this story going into it is so low on people's radar, but the story <laughs> build up to it has been fucking awesome. It's like a this is like the epitome of pro wrestling soap opera. <laughs> I love how you guys yeah, are trying to make storylines that it's been going on. Yeah, I love. I love how you guys are trying to make logic out of the WWE writing. <laughs> uh, I, I, I like I how we overthink it and gonna... we and we and we put more thought into it than they did. <laughs> yeah, they're getting paid. To yeah, for sure. To do it. I, it's gonna, I it's gonna wind up with like Oda. It's gonna wind up with like uh, Tucker and Dolph together somehow. You know, it was it was Rob Gronkowski the whole time. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Everything's Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> 
Andy, you back with us? Yeah, I don't know. Is this any better? Yes, yeah, you much sound better. much better now. Yeah. Much I don't, better. I don't, I'm, I'm literally laying on the couch, so I don't know why I'm yeah. loading it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out for next time. Even maybe we'll try um, all well, calling... What about Skype without video? See, Skype... That's the way me and Andy used to do it, yeah. Yeah, Skype, yeah. Skype yeah, that might could be work. challenging, Skype too, has, because that's, that's pretty good audio. you're relying on... What I'm thinking we might do to do is, is if we could do a conference call over, like, physical phone, like, phone connection. Oh, yeah. and then record that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Try that. This doesn't have to be live. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. All right, uh, what do you got for next match, Austin? Uh, yeah, Austin. Um, Austin. Yeah. Brian Austin says. Brian. Yeah. It's the women's tag title match: Oscar and Kyrie Stain against Necky Cross and Alexa Bliss. Necky. I think I think Alexa Cross, Alexa and Cross get it because I don't think they yep. they, they know what's I going agree. on with uh, Kyrie Stain and her contract. I think it's just time to change the title. It's a good way to get like a popular babyface team to win. I think they're going to try just because of the situation to do a feel good WrestleMania. And I think the way you do that is to have Nikki and Alexa win. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, time to pay that off. I, I say switch the titles too because they, they mean next to nothing and it just gets some attention on them. So, and, and they got a shirt. See, that's the only reason. Says, uh, I... I was going to say they got a shirt that says Chris Cross Applesauce or something real stupid like that. <laughs> yeah. if it's, it's, it's dumb. Bliss Cross Applesauce. That's, what that's the only reason why I'm not 100% certain that Bliss and Cross will win because the tag titles mean so little, and I feel like they just don't give a shit about it at all. So I could see this match having like six minutes and the Kabuki Warriors just winning, and then they just move on and do nothing again like they've been for the last two months as yeah. champions. The only thing and if I'm... Alexa wins that, she only needs the NXT title to be Grand Slam champion. Wow. Well, I, Bliss I, has I, already won the tag team titles before. Yeah. Well, has she? Yeah, 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 yeah they, were. they were. They were. I, I don't even remember that. I would. Like, I think they're the ones that beat the iconics. Yeah. I would like to see a character change for Alexa Bliss after this. If if they go, if they make her super baby face. Uh, what would you do to her? Like, what... I would just make her more what she naturally is because she's she is kind of a nerd. She is kind of into like nerdier stuff. I like just her whole look has been her heel look, and now she's just the same look, but she's just being a different like it for kind me it's it's, nice. it's hard to kind of i mean listen she's awesome to look at but she's she like she is smiling though but she always has those deceivious eyes i would just kind of make reformat her a little bit and make because the whole time you're watching you're like all right when is she turning heel again like you're just anticipating her going bad because i don't i think that visual thing to it where you just kind of don't trust her but she's been with uh nikki cross now for so long that obviously it's not going to happen and i think more people know who she is as a person and a lot of what she does, like outside the ring, like she's very reserved. She's With her not, pig. <laughs> yeah, like I think she's just more of like a down to earth person, and I think her persona doesn't pers- do that for her as much. So I would like to maybe see her come. I mean, like a pair, like not so much like big boots, but like maybe like like kind of like a, not a full punk rock, but like more something that she's comfortable with as a person. Because I think her character. I would like this. I would like to see her just come out. I would like see her just come out butt ass naked every week. That would be my. <laughs> I was gonna if say, we're, if we're fans, <laughs> there we go. I was saying, don't get rid of them shorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep the shorts. But I don't know. I just, I just think something like I just, I don't know, something that suits her more as a, as her, as a person. I don't know. But uh, another cool I thing. I think it I, can go either way, really. Yeah, I, I think it can go either way, just because when she was in NXT, and she was just this baby face wrestler, I was like, there's, and then they turned her heel and put her with Blake and Murphy. I'm like, there's no way this is gonna work. And then it really works. So yeah. I think she can do either one. Yeah. All right. What do we got for the uh, the next one here? It's uh, well, this is something they're speculating on because it's supposed to be the new day, the Usos and Miz and Morrison in a in a in a triangle three way tag match. But ladder suppo- match. yeah, ladder match. But supposedly Miz was unable to wrestle because when he got there he was sick. So it's uh, suspected to be John Morrison versus Kofi Kingston versus one of the Usos in a ladder match. Hmm. And the tag titles may or may not be at stake. Yeah. Her. Yeah, Miz is supposedly I, showing I signs, what... signs of a flu, but not severe or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I but they didn't they're... take any chances, so we didn't wrestle, yeah. apparently. Okay. Now, does Miz Morrison, are they the current tag champions? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say they keep it. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, so, I think, too. I think either way, Miz and Morrison retain. I actually like the idea. I would have Morrison just go out there on his own say that Miz got attacked backstage like they're so sick of Miz and Morrison they beat up Miz so Morrison has to go out there on his own in the ladder match or win because he's athletic enough to do it so like it would be cool to see him finally have a big moment since returning and he like retains the tag belts by himself 
Yeah, yeah. Morrison, Kofi, and Anuso would be if it's just a, a single like a three way singles instead of a three way tag. That could be fun, just yeah, because you have yeah, some really be, athletic guys that in there. That could be insane. Yeah, I uh, I want to say just to break it up, I think the New Day are going to win, just to be different. Yeah, I can. I, can, I, can and, I wouldn't be upset with any any of those teams. I'm a fan of all three of them. Yeah, you can see you can see it going anyway. And I think if it's a, I a, agree. If it's a three way with three guys, I think that might be better than a tag team with three way. Yeah. All right. What else we got here? Then we have the Raw tag titles. It's the Street Profits against Austin Theory and Angel Garza. And good for Austin Theory really getting uh, some shine here, but uh, I'd be prosecuted. What happened to Andre? Did Andre really get hurt? Or yeah, I think it's a like a real rib injury. I think he uh, uh, okay. messed up his rib when he did that, when he did that like flop a, to the outside. Uh, I don't know. Like I know Montez Ford said he broke his back, but I think he might have been embellishing a little bit with that dive. Yeah. But yeah, somewhere along the way, Andrade did really get hurt, so that's why Austin Theory is in there. I really think the Street Profits keep it there. Yeah. What do yeah. you think? Of yeah. This? My question is this: What do you think of what, this as being a possible stable? Raiders? I'm all for it. This, this. I don't. I. The LWO. I, I just. <laughs> I, I, just I, I, that's events like us put all the Mexicans together. Like I don't. Like I don't. It's just from what I've seen of Austin Theory and NXT, just from what I've seen in Austin Theory and NXT, I think he might be better there for a little bit, and even like on the house shows or NXT, just to kind of really season him out because there could be something there. But and I just feel like there might be something that a little bit more time in the ring could help. Yeah, to put it that way. Yeah, I think, I think he's gonna be the guy Roberts, comes out and people are like, "Who's this?" I think the Street Profits definitely will win because they're not gonna put the belts on Garza and Theory. But I just would like to know what happened to the Viking Raiders because that could have been a great match. And there's history there because the Viking Raiders beat the Street Profits in NXT, and the Street Profits never were able to beat them. And the Viking Raiders just left and gave up the belts instead yeah. of losing them to the Street well, Profits. The, the Viking Raiders were like, we don't care about the tag team titles. All we want is we want to fight AOP every week. <laughs> and now they can't do that. The plan, yeah. I think the plan was it for it to be AOP, Street Profits, and the Viking Raiders. And then when AOP got hurt, it kind of just all went to shit. But. Yeah. Yeah, they, they put that they, they put the eggs in the basket of Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens, and Viking Raiders versus the Seth Rollins crew for a while, and mm. we got that every single week for five yeah, months. Yeah, he got tired of it after week two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else we got here? And then af- after this, we were talking about Ring of Honor earlier. Here you go. Sami Zayn against Daniel Bryan for the Intercontinental title. It's going to be That's a fantastic, fantastic fucking match. I am really looking forward to that one. Daniel Bryan. I think it should open one of the nights. So I think it's going to do do really well in that yeah, spot. I think Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn have a very – they've been talking. If I'm, if I'm going to guess, this is just my speculation. They've been talking, and Daniel Bryan's like, all right, listen. Because I, I, I seriously think Sami Zayn getting the title – it had to be Daniel Bryan. I just, for some reason, I think it was a Daniel Bryan, like, kind of using his leverage, like, yo, get Sami Zayn, get the title, and then I'll wrestle Let's him. Let's use this for guy. It. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I think he turns around and says, I'm probably going to, Daniel Bryan's going to take the title off Sami, is my pick. But I think Daniel Bryan says to Sami Zayn, show them why they should have been using you this entire time. Let's just go tear the fucking roof off this place. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see. Yeah, it's a yeah. shame there will be a crowd because we be really good. Yeah. Match one of match one of two of the uh, former Ring of Honor champions. Uh, obviously, Sami Zayn was the tag champ with uh, Kevin Owens for a while, and obviously, mm-hmm. you know, Brian had the uh, that legendary run as as champion. I thought when Sami Zayn won the title at the last pay per view, I thought it was just oh, they're just going to put it back on Braun in a singles match, you know, at Mania, so he gets the Mania moment, and then they're like, oh, they're going, they're going. You know, I think I text Header as soon as I saw the build up, like two or three weeks ago. I said, I think this is what they're doing at Mania. Which I hope they do a feud with uh, Brian and that stable because I really want to see a Brian and Nakamura match somewhere down the road. Yeah. Well, that's Brian exactly go, going on Matt's point. That's exactly why I think Brian probably does win the title because then mm-hmm. you can have Brian defending the title against Sami Zayn. You can have him defend the title against Cesaro. You can have him defend the title against Nakamura. All matches. You we can want have to see. him defend the title against <laughs> Drew Gallic. Like and it's, Gallic, you know, they can have a good match for the title because you know Daniel respects them. You can thank them for helping him become champion and here, a good reward. Here's it's another thing as well, <laughs> and I, I don't want to be the guy to throw this out there again because it's just wrestling speculation one on one. There's been a guy who said if he's going to come back and he's going to pick anyone he wants to absolutely wrestle with, it's going to be Daniel Bryant. And if Daniel Bryan has a title on him, it makes it that much more exciting for a uh, future pay per view. Uh, CM Punk. CM Punk said the only person he, that excites him to come back to the ring for against is, is a Daniel Bryan. 
You're gonna be as a apparently title. Vince doesn't want him. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, yeah. yeah. Punk's on a like a list of people that Vince says he has no future plans of ever doing business with. Isn't that something, man, man? Man, what a flop him on that show was. I mean, the first one was good, was high ratings, and then everyone forgot about it. I, see, yeah. I, think, I, think, it's a, it I think it's a great show, and I, only the reason oh, yeah. I think it's a great show is because I think it's it. I think Renee Young has been fantastic in putting the right people around here that make it interesting where she's getting Xavier Woods and Booker T's and Punk here and there. But I think Punk is just a flash in the pan, like, let's get a quick boost. But I think everyone that's been around her and, like, with Paige and, like, people who aren't working but still have really, really big personas and people do like those people and want to talk, hear them people talk. I think, because realistically, she got bo- bo- promoted to that, or demoted to that show and taken out to commentary Please stable because me. of Mox. Because him leaving yeah. and, and, and I, I think truly as a person i think renee is a really cool person and i i do try to support backstage because i try to support her because i i think it was pretty much like let's just feed her to the wolves this isn't going to work and then she somehow f- find a way to get fucking punk on and then all the people she's putting herself around on that show i think it's a really good show i think i think it's a worth i think it's a good watch every week i literally have only watched that clip where punk started and that's <laughs> <laughs> me too i, I, would I like her it. talking smack though yeah, I, I would look into it, man. Really it's good. not a terrible show. It's like it's kind of like talking smack, but a little more open because they can say what they want. Um, with, when, oh, they say what they want about talking smack. It was great. Yeah, like I think that when Ember Moon's on, I get really excited for. It. When Xavier's on, I get really excited for it. I I just think I I I enjoy it. I really like it. Yeah, I will say this. I'm going back to the match. If I can watch one match these next two days, it would be this one, Brian and Zayn. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah there's another. There's and another one I'm really excited for as well. A few of them I'm pretty and excited it's for. A, but that's my number one. It's such a throwback to the days when the IC title was the quote unquote worker title too, which they're, I like. They are gonna work. Yep. They, yes, that's gonna be magic. Uh, sorry to cut you guys magic off, but we just talked about this happening, and now they're just showing it on SmackDown right now. It just got revealed. You know how they've been doing those like cuts where. They're showing that the lights and stuff, like who is it? Like those vignettes. Mustafa Ali. Mm-hmm. They didn't show who it was yet, but they, they had a person appear in like kind of like um an anonymous thing. And they're like the truth has to be revealed. And they just showed that it was Sonya that sent the text to Otis and it wasn't. Oh. How about that? They are paying off the story. Sonya's the one that's that's turning on Rose here. She rather sees yep. <laughs> Yeah. It's the higher power. It's the higher power. <laughs> She's the emperor. <laughs> the exalted power. The exalted one. <laughs> oh, boy. So is, like, Mustafa Ali going to be, like, a fucking hacker who... He's going to be, like, yeah, like, a hacker truth revealer. Do, do you where, guys yeah. remember when Sammy Callahan had that gimmick in that team? Solomon so, Crow, yes. yes. He's, and, doing, he, he's doing that gimmick in uh, Impact now. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next match. Next match, and I'm going to give the match. I'm going to say who I think is going to win, and I'm going to drop off for a second to use the bathroom. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Bailey, Sasha Banks, Lacey Evans, Naomi, and Tamina for the SmackDown Women's title. I think Sasha Banks wins the title here. Unfortunately, I agree with you, and I, I, I hate I hate it. <laughs> I just don't like Dude, Sasha Banks. Sasha, Sasha and Bailey turn on each other? Is it an elimination style, I wonder? Yeah. Or is it just no. one, one fall? 100%. Okay. I, I, I say Bailey. So, Actually, you know I what? I agree with Heather. Maybe Bailey keeps it, and she's the one who screws Banks because Bailey. That's the, exactly what happened. Bailey's it's the one who's being fucked over by Sasha. Banks all, all the time. Yes, it's too obvious to have Sasha turn on Bailey again. That's too obvious. It's going to be Bailey turns on Sasha to retain her belt. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And who um, else was there? It was Tamina. And who else? That uh, Lacey. Lacey Evans. Oh, okay. I wouldn't mind Lacey Evans. And then, and, then, and and Naomi. They should have done a one on one with Naomi and Bailey because Naomi was having killer matches on SmackDown. That's what I was hoping they were gonna do. Who's been having killer cat matches? Na- Naomi. I think I texted Heather about a month ago, and yeah. I said, "Don't try to go out of your way to watch." Like it was like her and Carmelo, and you're thinking, "Ah, just a throwaway match." Yeah. And, like they tore the roof off the house. Carmelo's fantastic. not terrible. <laughs> She's getting. She gets a lot better. Yeah. She's getting a lot better. She's. Yo, I'll tell you what. At a, like, I know the it's an overused move right now. She throws a really good super kick. I agree. She, I like, totally her agree. super she kick does. is, is really do, good. Uh, like, Nope. The DDT or DDT, like the Jackson nope. video, she should. She doesn't. Yeah, my mind. Robot Andy's back. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> C three PO. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Try that again, Andy. Uh, hello. This is this is bad. It's yeah. It's yeah, a your robot again. Okay. Hello. Maybe I don't know. Maybe turn off your Wi-Fi and just go off cell phone. Uh, you could try that. Um. Yeah, I, I or no. Did thing, I miss Robo Andy? Yeah, another thing that we could look at here is maybe 
maybe uh, Bailey rolls up Banks Cruiser. Banks goes after Bailey, and then somehow Lacey Evans sneaks a win out of it. Yeah, they could do that. There's a few different ways they could go. And then you can have yeah, Bailey, we'll Bailey Banks without having a title implication and just have them go at it. Because everyone, everyone's want to see that fight again anyway since since NXT. You can do that, but the issue is, is there's no good heels on the SmackDown's roster for women besides Bailey and Sasha. So Lacey's but, but you can, you can do facing? you can do what what's her name was doing after a while there too, where Bailey, where she's just like, hey, like kind of a respectful champ. Like Lacey Evans is like, I want to give people opportunities who haven't been in the ring for a while as champion. And then you have her go out and like ha- kind of have those classy style matches, like a, I don't know, just something to think about. You're just hoping that happens because you love Lacey. I just think I, think I think she'd be a great champion. I think her as a babyface is going to be fantastic. I, I think mind. it will be, but I think there's time. I don't. Yeah. I, don't I, I, would, I say more seasoning. I, on, honestly, another one here I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind Naomi getting the belt. I think Naomi's run as champion she had was good, and I don't, I, don't, I think she could have done more. I think Naomi coming back maybe there was rumors she was restructuring her contract. Maybe she sneaks a win here at Mania and she has a Mania moment, and uh, Naomi's champion for a while. I would be I would be cool with yeah. that as well. Yep, I, agree I don't. With I just don't think the title needs to be on the line for Bailey and Sasha Banks to fight each other. Because I like, wouldn't think so either. But they had a Raw title feud and it sucked. So this can remake up for that if they do. Yeah, but that's because they had that stupid counseling. They they weren't fighting. They were just arguing with each other and had like little street vignettes here. Yeah, and there. Was, they didn't have like dumb, an actual yeah. in the ring match like what people wanted. Ugh. Yeah. So what else, what what we got next here, uh, Brian? Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins I one on gonna, one. I, I'm I'm excited for this match. Um, and uh, as as Matt kind of alluded earlier, this is the other match of uh, former ROH champions. Yeah, I'm. I think this is going to be a great match. I I hope 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 we just don't get run ins and interference. I just want them those two guys to go out and work. I I think, I think this is a bluff, and I think you get that. You get what? I think it's a bluff, and I think you get just a straight up one on one. No, like people running in and out. Yeah, I think apparently it, Buddy Murphy is uh, ill. Uh, Buddy Murphy didn't show up for the tapings. He's ill. One of the AOP guys is hurt. So I think this, they're setting up perfect for a straight up one on one. I think it's the end of the feud. And I think Kevin Owens wins it. Yeah, I, I, I would. I'm, and I'm happy that there's no belt in the line here. I think this makes it a, a, be, a more a more fun thing where Kevin can chase a little more, maybe work his way back up for a title shot. But I just think that this is another match I have on my radar. I think Kevin Owens as well wins it, but I just want to see these two guys work. Yeah, it should be great. Yeah, I think I think Kevin definitely wins because the whole entire build up for the last like three weeks has been that Kevin Owens never had a WrestleMania moment. That mm-hmm. Seth has had all these moments that he beat Triple H and he beat Brock Lesnar and he beat Roman Reigns and he's done this and he's done that. So it's going to be even though because they're just pretending that Kevin Owens beating Chris Jericho just never happened because Jericho like got erased. <laughs> but uh, this will be Kevin Owens' big moment when he beats Seth. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think he beats him clean as a sheet right in the middle. Yep. yep. I, I say Kevin Owens wins too. Yeah, I, I'm pumped. I, I'm a huge Kevin Owens. I like Kevin Owens a lot. I just, I want, I just want to see him on an upswing. Just talking about this is making me more excited for this card. I'm glad we're doing this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I don't know, man. I'm pumped. Um, now we. What's the next one you got here, Brian? The next one is for the NXT title women's version. Ooh, baby. It's uh, Rhea match. Ripley defending against Charlotte Flair. This can go two ways. This can go. This can be a fucking exactly, barn burner. You're exactly right. Yeah, this could be a barn burner where these two people, these two women, go out there and just tear it up, or Charlotte can go out there and show that just Rhea Ripley is not on a level yet because she could just out like outclass her. I, I just just in ring ability. I I don't see it going that way, but I couldn't. I could definitely. If it does happen, I wouldn't be shocked because I think Charlotte is probably one of the best in the world. But I think this is a this is a great passing of the torch. I think my pick. I think Rio. I think Rio wins, and I think Charlotte maybe takes a little break for a little while. I don't know about the break, but I definitely think Rio wins. I don't think there's any reason or logic to Charlotte winning at all. See, I can give you some logic right here for it. I think the reason it makes sense if Charlotte wins is because then you can make a full circle story of Charlotte drops the belt to Bianca Belair. Because she embarrassed Bel Air, because you can have you, Charlotte. Yeah, go you can do that. You can, you can, but you can have Charlotte go to NXT for a couple of weeks and be a champion and evaluate the title. It makes the title even more important because Charlotte is probably the top women's wrestler in the WWE. But if Rhea so beats her, that makes the title really important too, because she beat Charlotte. Yeah, sure. it's enti- it's important either way. But yeah. if you have Bianca beat Charlotte, who is a known 
commodity, it makes Bianca huge. And you can keep Rhea on it. It's not like she has to be called up right away. And then if Rhea beats Bianca, they can have a long feud. It can make a star of both Bianca and, Sh- and Rhea instead of just having Rhea win and just making a star of Rhea. You can make a star of two people instead well, of just one. It just by well, I think, I think the more you make the stars, when Bianca beats Rhea. I think yeah, that's what that, you that's make what her I was star. thinking too. Like if Rhea, Rhea gets all the clout because she beats Charlotte and then Bianca gets the clout because then she beats Rhea later on and takes the title. And then when Bianca moves up to the main roster, then she can get her shot. Like it's a, it, it's a long play story where maybe five or six years from now you get the, you get or not you know, four or five years from now you get the, uh, the Bianca Charlotte square off where she gets called. And, and that's yeah, I, think that's, the, I think that's too long to wait four or five years. Cause the way she embarrassed her by putting the hand in her face and knocking her over and all that shit, you got to pay that off sooner than later. You don't want to wait too long for that. Even if Charlotte doesn't beat Rhea, Bianca at least has to get called up in the next year and yeah. like get it back on Charlotte. You it, can't it could be one of those things long. you put in your back pocket. Like for example, when 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 Ember Moon comes back and if the the Kabuki Warriors lose these titles and you're like, well, what can we do with Ember Moon? Uh, not Ember Moon with uh, with um, Oscar, and then all of a sudden Ember Moon comes back and says, "We have unfinished business." I mean, that's been how long now? But if that that could reignite and the crowd would be right behind that right away. Yeah, I'd be interested in that feud for sure. Yeah, that could be one of those back pocket things where they keep Bianca in the back pocket where she's always kind of eyeing up Flair. Just, you don't do it right away, but maybe you, you sit on it for a year or two. And listen, we're talking about making logic of it. There's no logic for Charlotte to beat Oscar and end her, her streak, but it just no. happens to the Charlotte Flair. Yeah. I'll tell you what, so though. So don't ever bet against Charlotte Flair winning a match at WrestleMania. Honestly, I liked true. Charlotte beating that streak. I thought that match was fantastic, and I never expected it to go by a submission. When it when she tapped her legs, I was like, holy shit, that just happened. Like It was a good moment. For me, it was a oh my god moment. I... I I, I liked it. I didn't mind it at all. And I think it was it was a perfect time for her to get that streak over because so, I don't like streaks. I'm not a streak fan. But I thought it was a good time to do it. And, I I mean, obviously it sucked for her for a while because they kind of didn't use her. But you can't use everyone all the time. Sometimes you got to take a back seat and you got to wait for a while and then wait, wait for your opportunity again. Like, not everyone can be the top of their game at all times every single show because – Someone has to lose. So everyone goes through a little bit of a roller coaster where someone goes in a dip and they suck for a while and we're like, they're not using this guy properly. And then a year or two from now, then, then they get a huge push because it's their time. Like you can't, not everyone can be the superstar every single week. I, and yeah, I, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. Well, I, I, on I'm, the flip side of that though, if you want a guaranteed way to get somebody over, just have them never lose. Yeah. They're going to yeah. get over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I see sure. Like they, they, they tried it with Ryback, and he still didn't really get over. I mean, yeah, people tried Oh, he got it. over. He got over yeah, huge that first time. Yeah. More bullshit, but yeah. it's not like they ever had plans of making him champion. Like, that That was never going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, well, but this, here, this is my... going to be fantastic. This Rhea Charlotte, I'm just really – when they when they squared off in the Rumble, man, I was like, man, I, I, I need this match. I think this is going to be a fantastic feud, and it, now we're finally getting it. Here's my take on the match. I mean, what's the reason why the NXT title is on Mania? Again, again, this is supposed to be on actual real Mania. And if you think about it, it's because they want to get more eyes on the NXT show on Wednesday because they're in the Wednesday Night War. Yep. So how do you do that? Do you do that by putting the belt on Charlotte and have Charlotte wrestle every Wednesday? Or do you have Rhea Ripley beat Charlotte clean in the middle of the ring and this way it gets her over and then that's like the only way to watch this upcoming superstar that's completely different than anybody on any roster is by tuning in on Wednesday. So that's where you have to, that's where you have to think is, is how are they going to do it? Yeah. Are they going to put the, yeah, the most great point, Matt, the, great point. The, the, the most over the most pushed person. And in my opinion, the best female wrestler on the planet, you put the belt on her and be like, Oh, you want to see her? You have to tune in on Wednesdays or it's just like, here's somebody completely different in the women's division anywhere, you know, in America. And the only place to see her, she just beat Charlotte. Who was in the main event of WrestleMania last year? Yep. And the only way to see her is Wednesday nights for NXT. So it's like, I'm gonna say Rhea wins, but I wouldn't be shocked if it's Charlotte. Yeah, I mean, either way, I I, I don't really as long as long as they have a good payoff here, I don't mind it either way. I go with Rhea. I I, 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 I would go with Rhea as well. Yeah, I probably go with Rhea. My prediction, but I would not be shocked at all to see Charlotte win. Yeah. Because that's she didn't have like I, the when she was in NX when she had the NXT championship was it no she, it was the NXT the, yeah oh, never mind um all right Brian what's our next one on the line here the next one is the Raw Women's title it's Becky Lynch defending against Shayna Baszler um I think I think it's a squash I think Baszler goes out and smashes her that's really what, wow that's what, that's what I want to happen um I don't I, know if it's a squash but I do think Shayna wins yeah I don't think Shayna has to win. 
So I, I my, my money's on Shayna, but I wouldn't be surprised if Becky won. I hope it's good. I hope they don't have like a clash of styles, which I'm worried about. Yeah. I think their styles I, will clash pretty well because Becky's more of a submission person too. So mm-hmm. I think you're gonna see a lot of chain submission reversals. Uh Shayna I think Baszler Becky is, needs she in my eyes, fantastic. she's one of the she's one of the best in the world as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and she was changed. But see, by- I think I think Tony's actually pretty he hit the nail on the head here. I think that it's gonna be not a squash, but I think it's gonna be very much a dominant type match where Shayna beats her down and beats her down and beats her down and Becky fights back a little bit here, but gets beat down again and fights back yeah. a little bit, but gets beat down again. I think this and then is, I think Shayna will will tap her out. This is gonna be Becky. You're gonna see Becky's heart. But it's not going to be enough. I think this is going to be the Brock Lesnar John Cena, where people are thinking John Cena's going to go out and then he just gets fucking his ass. Is it SummerSlam yeah. from a couple years ago. I think this is. I think you build a monster because Ronda Rousey's. That's what they want for Ronda, but she's flaky. They don't think like Ronda is. Is she in the business? Is she out of the business? Does she want to have a family? They know Baszler's a part of this business. She's she's not going anywhere. She wants this. There, there's your monster. I think it might be a little bit longer than that. That Lesnar seen a match from SummerSlam, and I, I'm right with Matt where I think these two will like kind of mix together perfectly. And I'm just thinking back to Becky and NXT when she was the Matt wrestler, when she was the technician, and that's going to go right into what Shayna does. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, that's, that's, that's I think it. I think it builds up. I think it builds up storyline wise too, because if you notice how the the storyline has changed for Becky, where last year I mean she was the underdog and she was the crowd favorite. And- she was trying to fight and beat Ronda and Charlotte, these two like well-known women. And now it's like she's kind of cocky and she's like coming out with mean glasses and she kind of thinks she's like on top of the world. It's Rocky Three, yeah. She's, yeah, she's, exactly. She's Conor will, McGregor right now. She, she's got yes, too big for and her this britches. Will be what happens when the way. champ when the champ champ loses and she has to fight her way back, and that'll be the new story. Oh, no, that'll, that'll be, that'll be no, the big pet. Another angle they can do here is. Shane is like, listen, you you were hyped up because you had these crowd chanting your name and calling you the man. Now there's no crowd. Now you just got to step in the ring with me, and you have no one to build off of. I'm just gonna whoop that ass. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I I can see Becky coming back and beating her eventually. But yeah, I think I think this is their, I think oh, yeah. this is your this is your this is your Ivan Drago Rocky first match where she just gets her ass whooped. Yeah, yeah. Long term, Beck. Oh, go ahead, Matt. Sorry. I was gonna say I can see that. I can see maybe not like yeah, maybe not a squat, but like where she kind of gets smashed, and then Becky just like, well, I was champ for a year. I should get a rematch, but I want to work my way from like not the like from the bottom up, yeah. and then maybe you have the two of them at SummerSlam, and Becky gets the belt back there, and then you do another rematch somewhere down the road. So like, yeah. That's like blow up. Hundred percent. What do we got next? But, and then we have the Firefly Funhouse match between Bray Wyatt and John Cena. It might be like the final solution, so it might be entertaining. I say Bray has to win it. Yeah, Bray hundred percent. Yeah, Bray. Win it. Bray definitely has to win this. Yeah, one. there's no reason for John Cena to win. Poor guy, poor guy lost to Goldberg. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, fucking sad. <laughs> it might be yeah, the, it might be the Fiend game. has to win because uh, Jeremy Borash will help do uh, a lot of my Hardy's deletion is, is there now, so we can use him to help out and direct and uh, produce. Yeah, and yeah, we're, we're, yeah, absolutely. I got a little bit of that. Really? I, I'm not. Yeah, are you? Are you still? Like, did you try to turn your Wi-Fi off so you just got on your cell phone connection? Oh, I, 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 yeah, maybe. I, I speak fluent robot, and Andy was saying that Jeremy Borash was the producer <laughs> for a lot of the final deletion stuff in TNA, and he's now in WWE, so maybe he's going to have a hand in this and, and make it somewhat similar. Oh, yeah, then I, that would be cool. I think if someone actually that's part of creative and actually is has a push of creative, and then you're letting Bray Wyatt have his free reign, I think that's all. That's just nothing. That's going to be nothing but good things because of Bray. Bray is a. F- he, he has a long term goal here when it comes to stuff like he, this is seeds he's planted years and years ago. Like he's just he's a nutcase man. He's in a good way. Like he's a, he's like he just has a vision and he's been rolling and they're letting him have it and he's been building really cool character development. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully this is like a bounce back for him where he will be able to really get into it and and kind of build that momentum he lost against Goldberg. Hey, I just want to say something real quick. Um, I'm not blaming the coronavirus. I'm Bray losing the belt to Goldberg. I'm just saying that the coronavirus didn't happen until Goldberg be Bray for the title. Yeah, it is true. It's 100% Goldberg's fault. That's, I mean, uh, this whole outbreak has been Goldberg's fault. I I can't see any. I can't see any logic that says against that. Yeah, that's what's that's what's going down. But we'll get into that match a little bit. We'll see what happens there. Um, What do we got next? 
Is it our, our next the gimmick next match? Is, our next gimmick on location match is the <laughs> Boneyard match Fucking between boneyard The Undertaker match. and AJ Styles. Who pitched that? They're like, that's a great name. <laughs> like, we're gonna have. I one. honestly feel like they pitched that because they don't want to say it's a buried alive match with everybody dying in the country and shit from this virus. So this is like a little bit more PG instead of saying a buried alive match. You're gonna have. It's a still a match in a graveyard. Match. AJ Styles. Hey, listen. Again, it's Vince's match. logic. Yeah. Are we gonna I wish get... this was a regular, just a regular match. Are we... That's what Taker needs. Yeah. Taker needs a guy that can bump and feed towards him. Are we going to get Taker coming out full Druid, full 30-second, 30 30-minute uh, 30 intro? Are we just going to get Taker rolling out in his jeans, no shirt, and a bandana? Not, not Kind of a crossbreed, not American badass, but a crossbreed where he's just he's coming out just as himself and he's there for a fight. I think you're, yeah, that, I think I think you're getting Undertaker Taker riding in. Yeah, I think you're getting him riding into a cemetery on a motorcycle. <laughs> that, would be, that should be on this paper. If When Pro Wrestling Scorecard puts their thing out, that should be a thing. Does Taker come out on a motorcycle? <laughs> but to Matt's point, though, I wish this match was just a one-on-one -on -one match because yeah. Taker doesn't have a lot left to give by like beating him at WrestleMania because he's already lost to Lesnar and he already lost to the Reigns. But if it was just a regular match and Taker lost to AJ by tapping out, that is the last thing Taker can give is by submitting to AJ. That would have put AJ so over if he made Taker tap out at WrestleMania. Do you, think, do you think AJ is getting oh. the win here? No, with it being this whole stipulation of this Boneyard shit, I think Taker will probably win now. Yeah. But who, who's if it was a one-on-one of... -on -one match, I, I probably would have said AJ. Now, obviously, Kane is going to be high on the list, but he said he's not coming alone. He's bringing two people. Who's the other person? Well, he's Holy Trinity. Trinity. Yeah. You know he's bringing? Like, cool. <laughs> oh, I would love that. He well, maybe wife. it'll be. Well, maybe it'll be Kane, and then maybe not so Michelle cool. McCool. Uh, maybe Michelle Layla's husband, the great Ricky Ortiz from ECW, <laughs> oh, and have God. his rally tell. Oh boy! I, what, I actually didn't. Good. I actually don't remember Taker saying he's bringing two people with them. So I have. He no said idea. there may be a holy I, trinity. Is what he said. He said. He, he said. Oh, okay. He said. Unholy. AJ, yeah. you can bring your boys. The OC, and I'm going to bring the Holy Trinity with me. <laughs> huh. Well, in that case, it's probably Kane and somebody, I would assume, but I don't know who. Paul Mayer, or Alistair okay. Black. Big, big show. Yeah. Well, he's already on the show. Or but there's no connection. Or it could be Michelle McCool and that tiger. Ooh. <laughs> oh, the, ti the tiger king. Tiger in there. The goddamn tiger king. It's Joe Mar <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Carol Baskins Joe better not it. take no. away that tiger. <laughs> That bitch. <laughs> Heidi hate. I've been, doing, I've been doing that fucking Tiger King voice around the house this entire quarantine. And if I die, it's because Heidi murdered me because I have annoyed her to the point where she's going to kill me with his voice. <laughs> so you know uh, that she, she's gonna feed you to your dog. Yeah, I haven't watched a second. Of it. I only know him because of the memes. Yeah. Oh, it's so a, Tony, it's... you know that video they had with uh, Michelle McCool and the Undertaker with the tiger in the pool? No. They did that on Raw a little while back. Like AJ was showing that like Undertaker was in this pool with a tiger and Michelle McCool. Like we have to save the tigers. That was done at that Doc Animal guys like thing in in Myrtle Beach. Oh wow, yeah, the guy who's the, the, uh, you have to watch the documentary, Andy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. So this Doc guy, it is it is pro wrestling. It is doc, pro wrestling. You oh know, my God. He, it's, it's, you know that guy was an indie wrestler. Oh, Doc Antle. He he was he was a, no, no Joe, the main guy. He was a promoter and like an announcer. They did like events there. There's like pictures of him with Tim Storm when Tim Storm oh, was a wow. North American champion. It's crazy. It's fucking insane. It's... Oh, by the way, again, not to cut you guys off or anything, but just giving updates on SmackDown while we go. They officially showed that Braun is facing Goldberg for the title, but they didn't really get into it too much. They didn't explain that like Roman, you know. <laughs> Why explain it? Like they're just <laughs> like, oh yeah, they're just like, hey, uh, breaking news here: Braun is facing Goldberg instead, and it's like, okay. Well, it <laughs> let makes, me ask you guys. It this. makes just as much sense as Roman walking out and saying, "I'm fighting you next." And exactly. Like, right. Cool. Exactly. Since he just he just got his damn title match by <laughs> coming out to the fucking ring. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead let now. me ask you this: you, you know, Here's what I would have done. Obviously, I would I would once I heard Roman like a week and week week and a half ago wasn't going to be in it. I'm like, it took me about thirty seconds. I'm like, ah, it's got to be Roman, and it makes sense because I know that they, they should have crowned him two years ago champion. Yeah, he, he has over, to win it, but the yeah, but here's what I mean, here's what I would have done. Do you've had the Andre the Giant uh, battle royal and it's meant nothing since after the first year? Have the winner of that 
right? Like whoever wins the battle royal wrestles Goldberg for the SmackDown Championship. So this way now the, the that battle royal actually means something and yeah. it does Andre's name. But right. they can't do the battle royal because of like the whole entire oh, so, so many people. Yeah, yeah they're not even right. doing the, royal, the battle royal. That. Yeah. Yeah. Damn social distancing. You didn't even think about that. Yeah. So, uh, and then, and then, uh, well, we just kind of talked about that. Brock versus, I mean, not, not Brock, uh, Goldberg versus Braun. I, I mean, you got to give it to Braun. Even if he just holds yeah. it for a couple months, he's got it. I'm just, get the fucking belt off Goldberg. There's a general rule in wrestling that the replacement guy in a big match like that wins, too. Just Always to kind of make yeah. the fans happy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I say Goldberg keeps it. <laughs> I think he might. I just said that. I think he might. Oh, I think that he might just to save it for Roman. And, and here's I something. I, 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 up. I'm gonna say and, this in this match. There will be zero botches. You know why? Previously recorded, so they can edit it all out. Yeah, well, Goldberg, oh, they should have. Had... They'll just splice. The, the... They should have had Caristico in. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said they can they can CGI so, like two guys in green screens holding le- Strowman's legs up for the jackhammer, so it looks like fucking Goldberg's holding them up there. <laughs> oh my god! They can use wires. They can just use wires. Yeah, and wires from the ceiling. Center. They said, yeah. <laughs> well, here's something too they could do. I was just thinking what Andy said that he thought that Goldberg was going to win. Obviously, the whole thing was to put the belts back on Roman. So what if Goldberg wins here? And then on like a, one of the SmackDowns, just to pop a rating, you do the main event of SmackDown in a week, two weeks, three weeks, what have you, is Goldberg versus Roman, and that's where you put the belt back on Roman. They can do that. Dude, if Strowman you know? goes out there and gets squashed again at a pay per view by a fucking, <laughs> old, like, I would just—he's gonna kill. Put him on suicide watch. He's gonna kill himself. Like, like it is kind of that. it is kind of do or die. He said it like zero and eight or zero and nine in pay per view title matches. Yeah, now. I, I like, he's zero and eight. I'd be like, oh, I yeah, quit. Like I fucking quit. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm done. I'm, you had me he's, pick up fucking old. semi trucks and flip ambulances and do all these incredible feats of strength, and I lose to fucking a yeah. boxer and fucking Goldberg in the matter of a year. Like get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, after he got over too, he was crazy. Oh yeah, was, yeah he was real bro. hot. Those but do you guys here? Here's the thing, though. You guys think there's any punishment for what Braun said online about indie wrestlers saying, "Hey, if you're an indie wrestler and you're crying that you can't afford to pay your bills, we'll work harder and all this other bullshit, and you'd be in a better predicament where you could pay your bills." And it's like, man, just keep your mouth shut. You yeah. got a guaranteed contract. I don't, I don't think. No, I know that. who runs that company. I know yeah. who runs that company. I don't think he's going to be mad. No, I don't think he gives a shit at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree with Andy. I don't think he cares. I don't think he knows what Twitter is. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> good shit. Um, and then our last match. Braun's right. No, we, 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 we have two matches left, Tony. Oh, do we? Uh, let's go. Yeah, we have, first of all, last man standing match, Edge versus Randy Orton. Oh, shit. Yeah, I forgot about that. Sorry about that. Yeah. Edge has Edge, to win. Edge, 100%. Yeah, of course, Edge. Is Should be win. good. Should be good. I think you know Lita, I maybe Lita to... comes down. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be shocked if Randy wins just to keep the feud going. Oh, maybe, yeah. But I think Edge is only supposed to do three or four matches a year just because of you know, how much punishment you can take out of the neck. But yeah. I'll tell you what, when you look at this card at WrestleMania, there's a good four or five matches that I'm like, I, I wouldn't be shocked if they went this way with it. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of agree with Matt here where I, I think if there was a crowd and everything was going according to plan, I think Edge definitely 100% wins. But now since there's not, I could see Orton winning and then making this match have a rematch of SummerSlam where Edge gets oh, Summer, a big win I think SummerSlam yeah. is going to be fucking huge this year because I think they're going to really... Is there going to be a SummerSlam? That's true. If like it, we don't know. That's the if thing. If it happens, man, they're going to yeah. this the, the, all the stuff that they couldn't do with a crowd in front of them, they're going to definitely blow off on their next pay-per-view. Yeah, the Hall of Fame is supposed to be uh the night before SummerSlam now, they're saying. Yeah. Oh, we're hoping, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was a good class, too. Listen, everything's going to be good. It was a great everything's going to be good by Easter. It's going to go away. <laughs> well, we have yeah. a week. Yeah. <laughs> it's just going to all magically go away. Whether it be our tra- president, our our Lord Jesus, baby Jesus Christ. So don't worry about it. It's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> and then our last match. Uh, last match for the WWE title, Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre. Now, this, this is where I think there's no crowd involved. Maybe Lesnar, and then you have Drew. I could see then, it. And then you have Drew beat him at the next pay per view, and there's an arena full of people. Oh, well, maybe. I could see it. Some kind of screwy finish, not like not like a cheating or like maybe like Brock somehow Brock. like it's his yeah. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? But I could see like Brock Lesnar winning with something where you don't make Drew look awful, and then Drew does get the proper coronation yeah. when he can do it in front of a crowd. 
<laughs> see, I don't see it just because this WrestleMania is already people are already not excited about it and people already are, are like shitting on it. And I think this is going to be the main event of night two. So I think it has to be yeah. about the happy yeah. ending, and Drew's got to win. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you, you know, I'm thinking like immediately, and and this, and they're talking about even possibly WWE taking a break for a while. They taped the Raw after WrestleMania, but after that, maybe it's almost like this isn't just WrestleMania; it's the season finale of Raw, and we'll see you in a couple months when this blows over. Yeah, they may have like an off season. Yeah. Yeah, which which them all everyone need. deserves. So I'm all for that. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. So I, I say Drew wins. Drew wins. Yeah, um, you've won me over again. Everybody's won me over. Tyler and Matt, especially. I think Drew wins. Yeah. Yeah, I think Drew wins. And I, this is, I know win. I said that. I think this match could be the the best match of the show, just because Lesnar just keeps getting better and better. And he keeps. I mean, the way he sells and He's the fantastic. way he bumps for people, and Mac and McIntyre is taller than mm-hmm. Lesnar. So I mean, and Drew McIntyre is like he's like. He's like the perfect blend of what the WWE wants and like that indie darling. Because when he got let go from the WWE, like he stopped drinking, he got his shit together, he went to Evolve, he went to PWG, like he and he started having these phenomenal, like him and Johnny Gargano, I think, were the first Evolve tag champions. He used to have these awesome, awesome indie style matches. And then he got back, you know, got back in a great shape. He went to NXT, he was having all those great matches. And then at the same time, he's also like six six, six seven, ripped, chiseled, like just like what the mids want. So he's like the perfect blend of like that really good worker and that like that stud guy that Vince always looks for. Yeah. And he seems like he got Brock engaged too, which is uh, which is a good thing because those two will fit great together. Yeah, I think this match will be a lot better than people think. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think it's going to be actually a really good match. I'll tell you what, like I said, starting it, that's our, that's our full Mania rundown. Um, going into it, I I wasn't I wasn't excited, but I think after we sat down and talked, like I'm I'm I mean it's gonna be suck to say it by myself and do it, but it's I'm, I'm excited for the I'm I'm excited for the weekend again. Like I think set, uh, sitting down and talking was awesome. I'm really excited to doing this again on a weekly basis. So as of now, man, Tornado Tag is back. We're gonna keep doing this. I think it was a good run. I think it was good. I mean, you're gonna have a little bit of interference here because we have to. We're at the mercy of technology, but I, I think besides Andy turning into a robot a couple times. I thought I thought this was, that was great. The best part. Yeah, I thought this was great. And I'm, and I'm very happy that we, that we were able to do this, man. Like this is this is awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Um, any uh, any last plugs? Uh, we'll start with you, Matt. Yeah, if you guys want to talk to me on the old social media, just search for Matt underscore Turner on the Twitter and on the Instagram. And as always, if you guys want to support us, uh, go to prowrestlingtees.com. Just type in the words blue and gold. We got three shirts up there. Awesome. We, uh, I would say we. Could do I a, second that. I can say we could do a shirt <laughs> trade, but I think I already own every blue and gold shirt. Um, we gotta get. We gotta, I am literally. Go ahead. No joke. I am literally wearing my blue and gold shirt right now. How about that? I'm actually wearing Thanks. my. I'm wearing my Veda Scott shirt that I got at PPW. <laughs> I'm wearing. I'm wearing my New Japan Shinsuke Nakamura shirt. Nice. I like how we're all still wearing wrestling shirts. Um, but we definitely. Andy Hunter, what are you wearing? I, I I'm gonna break the curve by my current shirt is Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> <laughs> You're supporting um what's his name? Bro Bro Keller. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocco types. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, but uh we gotta get we gotta get you guys in some T T T team T T P gear. We gotta get a tornado tech shirt on, on you uh, on Matt and Andy here. I know Andy has one, I believe. He, um, actually, just to let you guys know too, I didn't take a. I think I took a picture of it, but I didn't get a chance to show you. I ordered the the, the Tornado Mania hoodie, and I ordered it in purple. So it's my first and only like purple hoodie I've ever owned my whole life. Dude, it's awesome looking and purple. Really? Dude, the, cool. the, the the other color I recommend if you're looking at the if you want to get a uh, uh, Tornado yellow. Mania one, yellow or the Scott like the baby Robin blue looks awesome i i have i have the blue because it reminded me of like the ring apron yes when they would have that wrestlemania logo on it and that's the tornado tag podcast shirt i have yeah and I, awesome. I do recommend that yeah it's really cool so yeah um if you if you guys go over to the merch store it is uh i believe 15 bucks for a shirt and 25 bucks for a hoodie can't beat it um andy anything to plug any shows coming up <laughs> no. no yeah i like to tell him uh wrestlemania no. Unfortunately, there's no shows for a while yet, so nothing to plug. It sucks, man, because you, you were on a you were on a pretty big plugged. run here, man. You were you're looking at two two I titles know. and two companies. Yeah, I mean, we were, like I was every Friday and Saturday there for a while, and there's just like rip, hey, but I look like this, and any new wrestlers, it's, it's a nice time off to heal your body. 
Is this? Are you also still continuing to work out at home, like doing some push up sit ups, dips to keep yourself a little bit? DDPY, DDP nice. yoga. Nice. You know? I, yeah, I every know. every day, every day for me. I've been trying to get into more of the DDPY, but my back is still so screwed up, and I'm still twisted like a pretzel that it's it like uh, it's so uncomfortable for me to get in certain positions. So I, I I've been kind of not doing my yoga, but I wake up every day like I think I'm gonna start today, and then I get down to like one position, I'm like, oh god, I can't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to just use the use the chair, like you said. Hey, if you need to use the chair, make it your own. <laughs> yeah, I gotta I gotta figure something out. I gotta I gotta get going again on it. Um, Tyler, anything you want to get out there? No, nothing to plug. But it was great to be back, guys. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited, man. I I, I can't wait for this being a regular thing again, and hopefully the people like it too. Um, like I said, for now. YouTube, if you look at YouTube, it's going to be a little bit of a gap there. Um, I'm not going to render this and put it on YouTube with, with video. I was no. I did it for the last Bang & Beers because halfway through we lost video, so I just did the audio only. But I think from now on we're just going to be audio only podcast, and then when we come back we'll go back to video. But there's going to be a gap in the video number, so it'll be like number whatever, 30, 54, whatever we're at, and then it'll be like however long we go, just audio only. And then maybe even the last episode. Yeah, and then just... I, I, don't, I don't mean to cut anybody off, and I know you, we we got to wrap this up. But if you guys ever want to have me on the Bang and Beers podcast, one of my best, one of my good buddies actually owns the Fuck Brewing Company. Okay. So if you want to do like a uh, like a like if you want to do like a four way thing or a five like five way thing, yeah, with them, I can probably I can probably arrange that. Cool. Yeah, well, we 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 actually been going. There's our newest episode out now as we were at Liquid Noise Brewing Company. Like we, if, bre- if brewers are willing to have us, we will go to the brewery and go and try beers and sit down with the brewery, interview them, and find out how they go, went about it. So if they're ever interested, yeah, tell them to hit us up, and you can definitely join us on that think, episode. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that they would have a problem with it. Once the court, once this whole quarantine is over with, we'll uh, we'll definitely get that out. Get that working. Yeah, put the put the word out. We'll definitely do it. That'd be awesome. I know you're a, you're like your, you're a craft beer drinker, right? I sure am. Awesome, I will be man. drinking some fancy beers in the next two days for uh, my WrestleMania party with myself. So yeah, I have to go get some, but I'm definitely gonna definitely go make that happen. I gotta probably go tomorrow morning because I know there's a, the one beer place in Monty City is still open. I'm gonna go grab some beers. There you go. I need I need some for mania. Um, Brian, what do you got going on? I have murder my do going on, and it's uh, this quarantine has been good business for us. I can't you guys, lie. You guys have been killing. Uh, it. We've been doing very well for ourselves. We've been doing very well internationally. Like somehow we're like the hottest show in Canada now. I don't oh, know how that happened. <laughs> uh, but yeah, something like seventeen percent of our, our our audience is Canadian now. Uh, we did put up a new episode on Thursday. It is about Ira Einhorn, the unicorn killer. He Ooh. was a uh, hippie who killed his girlfriend and then ran away to Europe for 20 years to kind of put a bow on it. Uh, just look up Murder My Dude anywhere you look. You find podcasts, you'll find us, and it's a comedic true crime podcast. If you like that, you'll like us. They're fantastic, definitely. I that's it's one of my it's it's. I listen to maybe four podcasts, and and they are on my – they're like my number one must-listen to shows. We were number one on his Spotify for the year-end list. When everybody's yep. doing the year We beat Bruce Pritchard. Yep, he beat oh. Bruce Pritchard. Yep. That's right. I Eat it, a, Pritchard. I am, a, I am a Murder My Dude fan. They do a great job. Even if I didn't know Brian, I would listen to his show. I think that they do a good job on it. I'm just very fortunate now he's a Tornado Tag podcast member as well. And and hopefully we get Jack back soon. Um and we can we can have uh maybe Austin call in next week as well. So this this is going to be a little fun. We're going to do more uh, over the phone stuff. But uh we'll we'll test some new things out. Thank you for sticking with us. It may sound a little different because we are over the phone, but uh Stay with us, stick with us, and uh, bear with some of the technical difficulties, and we'll keep it going for you guys. I hope you're excited we're back, and uh, we'll be back to a weekly thing, but it'll be audio only, so definitely uh, tune into that. All right, we'll see you guys next time. This is going to wrap it up for Tornado Tag Podcast. See you next. See you soon.